Hey, yo, what's good? What's good? What's good? Welcome to Reflections of a DJ, the role podcast presented by DJ City and Beat Source. I'm one of your hosts, DJ Crooked. We got DJ Never here. Yo, yo, what up? We got DJ D Miles. What's good? What's good? We got Jamie the Great. Yeah. And we are officially back from our one month hiatus. Yes. Right? Hiatus. We are officially back. <laughs> yes, sir. You know, we told y'all we're going to come back with a special guest. We're coming in strong, pause, you know? We got, we got a big <laughs> guest here, multi platinum producer. One of his singles, By Law, is like. Almost diamond, maybe eight times platinum. Yeah, we're almost there. It's almost. I, I wow. consider it diamond by now. Eight times. <laughs> it could be. Yeah. Right. All the bootlegs we got there. Yeah. He, <laughs> he, 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 he's one of the premier Latino EDM festival DJs in the world. He just wrapped up like this incredible EDC Mexico set. Yeah. I think he had like eighteen thousand people line dancing. Yep. I don't. Maybe maybe more. Someone was saying fifty thousand. I don't know what it was. That was Fina. Fina was lot. gassing up those numbers. <laughs> I think they're, I think they're trying to work out. I think they're trying to work out. Some Guinness World Record numbers for that, for the yeah, biggest yeah. line dance or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, he's set to do Ultra for the first time in Miami. He's going to do Beyond Wonderland. And I think this is his first podcast ever. First one. Man. Wow. Yes, it is. I, I'd like to welcome LA's very know. own from West Covino, Dioro. What up, Dioro? Yeah. What's up? Yeah. What's up? How y'all doing? What's good? What's good? All right, I'm good, man. Uh, yeah, man. I mean, it's been a crazy year so far. Yeah, uh, yeah. And it's only March. That's crazy. Yeah, that's bro. crazy, huh? And, crazy. Um, well, I'm here. For well, it. April now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is the biggest entourage we've had coming. I mean, I know, yeah, right? Whole squad got a whole team with them <laughs> doing they, big things. They, they, they all want to see the first podcast. Yeah, know? is that <laughs> what it was? I, after this, there's only gonna be one or two. Yeah. I, know, I, 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 had to, I had to break out, you know, some tequila and some uh, Girl Scout cookies for y'all. You know. Yeah. Br- bringing out all the amenities for you guys. Yeah, man. <laughs> What's good? So Thanks. you're set to do, is it, you're going to do Hakkasan tonight? Hakkasan tonight, yes. Is this your first time doing Hakkasan? No, no, no. Oh, I've done, done it I, Yeah, I've done it before. Um, I know you're usually at Marquee. Yeah. Yes, correct. Yeah. But, you know, ever since that whole merge happened, now now I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, we get to do like everything else now. Yeah, so. MSG, Tao Group, they took over yeah. um, Hakkasan Group. Yeah. Big blessing. Right, right. So, yeah. so you get to like spread out to all these yeah, different Yeah, and venues. it's cool because like you get to, you know, like I, I'm I'm really talkative and, and I always say what's up to the security guards. Yeah. You know, and they're like, That's good. what? You know, and they're like, you know, like hanging out with them. You know, it's like a, a really, it's where I want a puppy love stages right now where it's just like, they're so excited yeah, yeah. to see me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, mm-hmm. so like, you know, and then, you know, I get to play uh, Tao Beach Club and all that, so. That's like the resident DJ when the resident DJ comes yeah. in, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. All, like security knows yeah. them, the yeah. bartenders, yeah. Yeah. the bartenders, yeah. the waitresses, yeah. so they and, probably, they, and they appreciate it, man. They appreciate yeah. it, you know. And I'm yeah. just like, oh, it's, it's sure. so much fun to see their faces light up when I remember their names. You know, I'm just mm-hmm. like, yo, what up, Jeff? And they're like, whoa, whoa. you know, it's, it's the best <laughs> thing to do, bro. <laughs> I, I heard you at um, in San Diego at, at this festival, Blended Festival. Uh-huh. Um, it was in 2021, like and two years is ago. Is that the one that was outdoors? That was outdoors. Is that the wine one, right? Yeah. Yeah, I played for like 15 minutes, I think. If that was it? Yeah. Really? Yeah, because they yeah. said you cut your, your, your sets short, Yeah, right? you know what? You know what? Um, I'm the one DJ, like if they're falling behind and they're stressing, I'll be like, look, y'all can cut into my set if you want. You know, like I'll, 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 save, I'll save the show. Okay. You know, and um, I see. I would do that because I'd be like, "Oh, less time, same money." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Come and check in half. I'm okay. I'm like, I don't care. Y'all paying me the oh, same. Less anxiety for you. Know, you. But you know what? Like, 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 it was cool though because, like, I know, I, like, it wasn't really strongly my crowd. Those other artists. Those other artists. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I felt like I was like, you know what? This one might be cool to kind of like help out the festival. Mm-hmm. And then I played just basically. I didn't play. Usually when I play, I play like other people's songs. For those 15 minutes, I just played my main songs. You know? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's like I feel like people still got like what if the people that want to go see me they still got. I, I well, I heard for what I heard, I was just because usually when I hear you know I'm look like all of us kind of work in Vegas. We've all worked in Vegas for you know him him probably the least amount maybe like six years, but all of us wow. have been like 10, 15, 10, 15 years easy. in, in yeah. Vegas. To Twenty shit. Twenty wow. years. Two thousand three. Wow. You know, we got New York like me and Never from New York, D and Jamie from L A. Oh yeah. wow. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. like we came here and we we've been in you know we've been through all the phases of not life and yeah because it's transformed man. Yeah. yeah so yeah. when i hear edm djs you know there's maybe a handful of djs that i hear that i'm like skrillex lay back luke uh-huh. chucky like oh they're doing some different shit yeah you know they kind of spin a little bit like a open format dj yeah 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 so when i heard you i just loved how you were spinning and i was like i remember i was leaving the fest like your stage i was like kind of uh-huh. walking out and then you made me turn around and like i stayed no way yeah yeah That's and i was cool, listening man. i was just like oh shit the horizon and I was like checking you out. I was like, "Oh shit!" And I was like, "Wow, you were dropping like 
Cumbia, and then I think you dropped some Venga Boys. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And I was just like, yo, this is crazy. Yeah. And then it was just like one of the best EDM sets I've heard, oh, even bro, though it was bro. like a limited amount of time. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. that. But you, know, I, you, know, I, you know, a lot of, I, I do come from like, um, you know, I used to DJ house parties and stuff, so yeah. I come from a big. Uh, I, I, I'm I'm a caterer, right? Like mm-hmm. I, I, I I I I I'm. It's essential for me to feed off the crowd, right? And um, you know, I'm also lucky to to also be able to play some of my own tunes, you know. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I learned from from the vibes of the peak hours at the, at the festivals, uh, from from the weddings and all that back in the day. You started DJing super early. You were yeah. DJing like. 14 years old you were doing like yeah. clubs like before you were 18 i was right? yeah yeah I remember but what, they, they, were you allegedly. djing like open format shit like hip-hop and <laughs> no uh, man what? no no so so i started doing like it was edm that i started doing okay uh, it was well not edm it was uh like jungle drum and bass okay yeah and i used to mc and everything oh. so yeah like that's how i got into it bro and i was i was handing out flyers i was like i just wanted to be in the scene man and i was too young was and that what you were going by? Was it Tonic? Tonic. Yeah, yeah. it was Tonic. Back Wait, where'd, in the you, where'd you get that name from? I was just curious. Tonic. So my favorite movie is Iron Giant. Okay. And um and the and there's a scene the animated. Yeah, 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 the one with the robot. Yeah. And uh, I remember there's a scene where like the, the, that kid puts like laxatives in, in his in his uh Sunday and then he gets angry and in the back in the window you can see the word tonic. And I was like, that's cool. And that's my name that's now. Funny. <laughs> <laughs> funny. <laughs> It's so random, but <laughs> wait, wait. So you you said or I, I, there were some interviews. You said you were into like Jimi Hendrix. You were into like rock. You were into like oh, yeah. Rage Against the Machine. So how did yeah. that kind of you know transform to like house and jungle and and so, so you know? it was it was you know music. My 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 relationship with music stemmed differently from DJing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, DJing was strictly work. Like when you know was to pay the bills. Uh, music. I just grew into music since I was little. I can't tell you when it started. Yeah. Um. It just you know. I I I, I remember my parents. Well, they met uh, in a choir, and then they had me. And then I remember when the kids when they had rehearsals, they would uh, the kids would go with the uh, wherever the kids went, and then I would stay in the music room and I'd play with all the instruments. I remember oh, I didn't yeah. know I was like banging a trumpet on the drum. I was like I didn't know anything, but I was just I just appreciated music, <laughs> and uh, yeah, man, I got into Bob Marley, you know, because my cousin introduced me, and mm-hmm. then I got into like Rage Against the Machine and all that. So my music side was always there, and then DJing came about, and I remember the one time that that I remember I was at a house party. And this is, uh, you know, LimeWire days, bro. I used to, like, yeah. uh, I used to download, and I remember I downloaded <laughs> Benny Benassi, right? And I was like, for me, that music was just, obviously, just techno. And uh, one time, this dude came up to me at a house party. He was wasted, bro. He came up to me. He was like, hey, did you make this? I was like, no, bro, this is techno, bro. I can't make techno, you know? I, didn't, I, I couldn't imagine how, I didn't know anything about, like, right. the softwares. And then I don't know that that clicked, you know, that stayed in my head, and I was like, like why can't I? Make I was like, this, can, right? can I make this? Right. You know, and I remember I would always go, I would always uh, save some cans. I was literally saving cans, bro. And I would go to the bus, uh, I take the bus at the guitar center in the West, the old West, West Covina. And uh, I remember I always used to be like in the drums and the guitar section, the ki- and piano. And I remember there was a section in the back where it had all the synthesizers and everything. And I went in there. And I was like, wow, it's a whole new world, bro. And uh, I asked them, I was like, how do I make, you know, techno music? And they were just like, oh, the, the softwares and stuff. Wait, what year is this, you think? <sighs> you said long I was wire, like, so it had to be I was, like, I was, I was like, 2002? Yeah, I was like 16, Early 2000s, bro. right? I was like 16. And uh, yeah, man. And, and, and yeah, I remember, I couldn't, obviously, I couldn't afford it. But um, he was just like, there was this software called Mixcraft. And he was like, there's a demo that you can use. And it was funny because the demo only allowed me to use it for 15 minutes, and then like it would shut me out. But I couldn't export anything or save anything. So I remember I would like, oh, I was able to export. So I would just like build music, and I would just take advantage of the 15 minutes, uninstall it, reinstall it. I would do that all oh, day, bro. <laughs> I would do that all day. Nothing was stopping me, bro. I was just like, this is the way to do it. I'll do it. And yeah, and at the same time, uh, that's when my dad got into DJing, um, and, and I would go with him to help him. And, uh, what part? What kind of parties were your DJ? Well, I mean, was your father DJ? So my my dad would do like, it, was, it was Mexican parties, Latin parties, right. and he would play the guitar and do karaoke and like he'd sure. sing and stuff, and then he'd play the music, and I would go and help him with the speakers, you know, just to like you know. And um, when I got a little bit older, uh, I remember there was a party, like some graduation parties that families would have for whoever was really the kids that were graduating, and then uh, I remember I would play more of like the younger music. Like my dad would want me to play some of the younger music for those kids, and then they would be like, "Hey, we're having our own." party here tomorrow can you come back and you dj the whole party wow and that's how it started you know i started playing 
And, so you, uh, you, you and your father were like the EC twins a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, duo. Yeah, you guys exactly. were like two together. <laughs> exactly. You know, and it was it was just difficult. <laughs> Griffies, bro. Griffy <laughs> Junior, bro. It was difficult when when you know, like I'd be like, I can I, I could probably come back, but this is my father's gear, you know, and uh, I had to save up money to try to get my own little gear. I remember mm. I would DJ with like a guitar amp from the pawn shop. Yeah. Mm. And uh, I remember I was using AirPods. I mean, was AirPods, your dad iPods. On, was your dad on vinyl? No, no, he he used to go straight off of this uh, this uh, karaoke thing that had oh, okay. CDs the CD as well. decks, yeah, yeah, bro. And uh, we got like the swap me, you know. It was like it was like we used to, we you know we were, we were getting Making by though, we were yeah. getting yeah, by. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it was yeah. working, bro. And then um, what I, was you playing? So I was doing a lot more. I was doing like the, the too short E forty, like all that. Oh, okay, like back you know like what the kids were on to listen so to. He was like a hip hop DJ. In the yeah, back, bro. Right? That's how it started off. And then I was also in the EDM crowd, like well, like early raver days with, with like some of my friends that mm -hmm. um that I met, and uh, I thought they were the coolest kids ever. So I wanted to get in with them. They were older. Uh, they were like probably two three years older than me and uh they were was just, these the house party crews and shit? yeah the house, well no this is oh. later on this is like rowdy a gotham city day no, a little bit earlier than that, earlier it, than it, that. it was mostly it was mostly like th this these were still warehouses that would go to that would okay. be illegal and uh they would get raided all the time by the, by the cops okay so this is like oh six to like oh yeah they're super illegal yeah and like you couldn't you had to like you had to you get a text, right, text. And, yeah, then, and, then, and then yeah. yeah and then you'd meet in some alley and some van would pick you up and you'd go to the party <laughs> oh crazy. this is different this is different <laughs> <laughs> what is that the other one was like you get to the corner and the guy would tell you what house this yeah guy. yeah same yeah, same thing back in the day only in the 2000s would that ever happen yeah. Yeah. I know right <laughs> when you text and a van <laughs> so, comes in and everyone just jumps in and goes it, right? it, it was the coolest thing ever you though, get a bro. shuttle bro I yeah. remember one of the coolest raves I ever went to was like it was a house and uh, and like one of the there was a hallway and there was like a little walk-in closet tiny but there was, that was a stage, <laughs> oh, stage. And, and it was like super like hardcore techno do you remember the moment you were just like that's what I want to do yeah. yeah so so I remember I went to Nocturnal uh, 2007 it was in LA they had it at the Staples parking lot and I remember I saw the DJ up there and I was just like it wasn't about me being uh, me wanting to be up there and getting all the attention or anything it was me creating this vibe mm -hmm. and I was just like I want this. Like controlling the energy of the yeah, room. Yeah, I was like being, yeah, yeah like, like giving people a great time. So you're time. like a real DJ, right? Yeah, yeah bro. He's a <laughs> because I feel like DJs nowadays, they care more about being the center of attention yeah, yeah, than yeah. creating the energy of the room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you know, you know what? what? Because I remember what it's like being on that side of the speakers, right? right. And like, it's great to look up and, you know, to look up at an artist. And, you know, when, especially when, like, I when I, I looked up to Tiesto, when I saw him, it was just, like, you know, it changed my life. Right. Uh, yeah. But I remember going to these parties where the DJ was, like, you didn't even know where the DJ was. Nah. You it know? was, like, hidden right. and shit like that. Yeah, and, like, yeah. He, the, the, sometimes he wasn't even facing, <coughs> you know, looking for the records. He, didn't, he wasn't paying attention to the crowd. He was just, you know, creating yep. the vibe, man. And that's that's really how, I think that's why, too. Cause that's how like, the nightclubs used to be, even in Vegas. Like, the DJ was off to the side. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember when XS first opened. No one DJ, knew. The DJ, they put him in yeah. the wall. They in put the him in the wall. Yeah, yeah. yeah you and, know, we, and, and don't get me wrong. <laughs> don't get me wrong. Like I'm, I mean, I love, I love interacting with the crowd. I think one of yeah. my favorite things to do is making eye contact with, uh, with anyone and like letting them know I'm making eye contact. You know, especially in the bigger the room, the crazier it is for them because they don't expect me to connect with them. Like when, say, I'm at EDC and I pick someone random in the crowd and they're giving me like a, a, a some a sign, and I make it back to them, and then that's when they go like they change it and I change it with them. Them, you know, and they go like that, and, they, and I go like that, and then for a second they realize that I'm looking at them, right? You know, because it's it, it is it, it, it's it's a euphoric feeling, and it's crazy to really try and focus on everyone because it's mm -hmm. overwhelming. But when you do, it's like, you know, they go home, and I've seen tweets, and just like I can't believe he looked at me, yeah. you know. And it's just like, it, of course, you know, like it's it's really special. And I always encourage other DJs to do that, man, because it's like they they don't expect that, and it's, it's so you know, hard. I, I try to do it, and I can't do it. <laughs> yeah. you know? Well, he, you know what he, he throws roses now. If you saw the yeah, EDC yeah, yeah. one, I seen him at Marquee, and he throws roses at people. I mean, he does that at EDC. I'm like, fuck, how are you going to get all the way to the back? <laughs> it's funny. Yeah, EDC was funny because it's, it was like a closed thing. So I remember I, I did my first one, and I remember my photographer, Edgar, he was just like, oh, shit, he's not going to be able because I didn't make it all the way. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't make it. And I was just like, okay, I'm going to have to actually launch him. But I was uh, launching him weird because I, I didn't want to yeah, hit the It was like a frisbee throw. Yeah, because, uh, you know, it's the art that always gets the distance. Mm -hmm. uh, but this one, I was throwing him sideways, and I was like, damn. I'm only gonna be able to hit the front row, and it was hard. But yeah. <laughs> how was EDC Mexico? How was it? You know what? That entire weekend, uh, 
was was insane um i remember uh i finally got the chance to go a day early mm -hmm. to get to, to to get to walk around and uh there's a lot of history there. Oh, you've, you've never like kind of roamed around you've i've never, never gotten the chance to man isn't that the worst being a dj when you yeah. kind of go into yeah. a city you're yeah. just there for like all i know is 18 that, hours. all i know is the airports and the hotels and like yeah. the yeah. Venues, yeah. you, know? you like, never get to experience yeah. the city yeah it's like every now and then you have like one show here and then like two days later another show right. like that's like it just works to have one day off in the middle mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. excuse me and that that's what we had and uh, i got to go to la basilica that's where like oh, they, they have the, the, yeah bro they have the picture of the virgin mary and like it was magical bro mm -hmm. you know like i got emotional my, it was my wife's idea and uh you know i was with my crew and um i remember one of the guys from my crew he he was uh it was the first time coming on with us uh, uh, we we usually have a security guard when we go, yeah. And it was his first time with us, and he was telling me he grew up Mormon, but he said that going changed his life. Really? He like thanked me like it, it's insane, bro. It's magical and it's truly it's truly it's beautiful, bro. Yeah. But that's how it started. Right? That my right. trip in Mexico, and then uh, and then we went to EDC Mex. We went to the to festival, and we had some tacos, bro. Like <laughs> like ladies back there making tortillas by hand and right. everything, you know. And uh, and then I I remember I showed up to the media. Or you can do interviews. I had four interviews lined up, bro. I said, fuck that. I did every single outlet, bro, except one. But I did. I was there for like two hours doing interviews, bro. I was just so happy to be there. <laughs> you know? And then after that, I went immediately to the stage. And, I, you know, I played one of my favorite sets I've ever done. Yo, yeah, I, I saw your clip on YouTube, and you've killed it. <laughs> Thank you, Yo, bro. It was, I was amazed because you was like on stage by yourself. And you had like fucking over... How many people was in attendance? It was like maybe yeah, yeah. I think at the at EDC, I think somewhere around forty thousand. Yeah, 40, at the, it was at like stage. Yeah. and you like couldn't you had the fucking audience mesmerized. Everybody was like um, fucking following you. There was well, like he, he had the blind dancing right. <laughs> <laughs> was crazy. Did you know that that was gonna happen? Were you hoping like yo, bro, this just, might happen? No, it, it, this this is a given. Like right, uh, it's yeah. not even me. I, yeah. Anyone could go up there and play that song, and that's gonna happen. It's a Mexican. Mm. It's a Mexican to play thing. That at yeah. Any party. Yeah, it's not like my thing. Wait, what song is? Was it exactly? It's Caballo Dorado. Mm -hmm. No rompas más. No rompas más. Yeah. Yeah, so Caballo Dorado is the group name. They have two big songs that is line dancing. One's fast, one's slow. The yeah. slow one is called No Rompas Mas, and then the fast one is called Payaso Rodeo. Payaso Rodeo. Yeah. So I'm telling I, you, bro, I was surprised it, you didn't go into the, la to the faster one. I, you know, I did that last year. Oh, okay. The thing is, I try to stay away from it because it's fast. Yeah. And it's a lot of people, you know, and it's just like <laughs> I get scared, bro, because like, I don't want nobody to get hurt. But I remember... Uh, yeah, like I said, I even tweeted. I was like, I encourage other DJs to do it. If you have the opportunity and if it fits your set, play the song. Especially if you're in Mexico, bro, because that, that's everyone knows what to do. You don't even have to say. Just like everyone knows what to do. That's like the go-to. Is it like a go-to song for like yes. weddings and yes. shit? Right? Yep. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. I think we, we, you and I, had to play that. Oh yeah, for um, <laughs> we John, did our our ex managers, yeah. our former managers' yeah. Uh, wedding. And yeah, we had to play that. <laughs> yeah, he was like, oh man, my wife wants this. Yeah. But I don't want to. I don't want to play. Best, it. It's, like I'm, I'm, it's, it's classic. It's about four hours long. Four, I mean, four minutes long. And yeah, then the it's, it's, it's classic. And like, I think it's one of those moments. The reason I, I I really wanted to do it is because it reminds us, you know, of like you know back home. And yeah. Like all the stuff we you know. Yeah. I grew I grew up with that, and um, you know, also DJing with my dad. It was something that almost yeah. every every party. You know, I was gonna say like you know just absorbing all of your dad yeah. and those parties. Yeah. And, yeah. Because yeah, I got to give you props about I think like three four years ago you tweeted out like. Uh, moving forward, eighty percent of my sets will be Spanish driven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, bro, I admire that shit because I'm Mexican too. Mm -hmm. And you're like, like before we used to look up. I used to look up to like DJ AM and Jazzy Jeff and all these wow. greats. But now I'm like, oh shit, Dioro is the guy now. Yeah, like you influenced me to play. You know, cumbias with hip hop and shit. Oh, that's dope. Things that like you pushing the barrier forward. Us Latinos, not just you know Mexicans, but I think Latinos, we have a lot to offer. You know, yeah. to the music culture, and uh, um, you know, I think, I think, I mean, everyone does, right? Everyone. I feel like um, Latinos, especially because I'm you know part of Latino, and, and and I know there's a lot more stuff I'd like to blend in with EDM. Yeah. And uh, you I know, saw the interview, not to cut you off, but you said that there was a um, lack of representation with the Latino community in the EDM world, right? Well, you know, it's it's. It's, it's yes yes it's there i've me, i've met so many kids i'm just like bro the talent exists it's here it's just like mm -hmm. we, you know we, i gotta i gotta take them on tour we gotta get these people out you know mm -hmm. and um you know i've been trying to do that i took like i uh, took the, uh, a couple of cats on on my last my last tour and uh you know i'm trying you know i'm trying i can only do so much but there it's it's there there's there's talent well, yeah you, you brought noise kid on, on stage noise kid you, right? oh, an animal bro i always tell him bro i was like bro you're a 
peace, bro. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm gonna be opening up for you one day, dog. <laughs> Shout out to Noise right. Kid. Yeah. That guy's yeah, really Noise Kid. Man. Yeah, Noise Kid's amazing. Those duties, those kids uh, are, are from uh, talented as hell, bro. Like, I'm just, it's insane. I feel like I don't know what it is, uh, but you know, I, maybe it's just the 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 way things work out there is not as you know, not as, I don't know what it is, but but. It's not as probably open and, and understanding. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. I think out here, is, I think also this is more. I think it's really new out there as well. I don't know. I don't know. I, I feel like you're around 2000, like 15, like there was a turning point for you, right? Kind of. Like, yeah. Because like in your earlier career, from like 2000, probably 12 to 15, uh, your production was very. It was like it was it was part it was like part of the moving trend. Like there was mm -hmm. Dutch house. Then everything became pop, and you had all these hits. I mean, you had a bunch of hits. Yeah. I mean, yeah. 2014 was a good year for you. That was a good that year. Was year. That yeah. was a year. I'm thinking I did DJ Mag. I like I did to, like Tomorrowland. Yeah, you have like Freak. You had Freak with Stevie Oki Diplo. Yeah. You had Flashlight with Rehab. Yeah. And then your that big hit Five Hours. Yeah. That crossed over. And then that you was had, crazy. You had Chris Brown on Five More Hours. Yeah. Right? You know what? The, the crazy part is that um, a lot of the songs I released like back to back, like within. Right. Like, I remember I released like Flashlight. And that hit number one, and then the next day, I think five hours hit number one or something like yeah. that. Yeah, and it was just like insane, bro. And and the thing is, like, there was no, um, there was no, like, I think hearing those songs, like, cause we were playing all that shit in huh. like Vegas mm -hmm. big rooms and shit. Yeah. Wow. But like I wasn't like this is definitely a Latino DJ or a Latino <laughs> right. producer, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. It took some time yeah. for me to know you were Latino. Yeah. It's, you know what? And to be honest, because I mean, I grew up, I grew up here, right? I was right. born, I was born here, and uh, but I had Mexican parents, and you know, leaving the house, you know, I had American friends and all that, and you know, I got into the scene, uh, in the English thing, you know, like right. it was hip hop and all that stuff, and, and and English EDM, and I was influenced by a lot of European EDM, mm -hmm. um, and then I remember I did hit, I'd come at a point where like. I had like I don't know I had like a mental breakdown where I was just like okay cool like I I, I traveled the world I you know I got on DJ Mag I was just like damn like what else do I have to offer you know and I when was it like around what time was this after five more hours yes 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 yeah, this was like around the time my my Good Evening album came out that's why it took mm -hmm. forever because um I kind of I kind of fell into like this weird state of mind where I was just like damn like I, what else well, do it I was have? almost like uh, like you were you were achieving all this. You were achieving all these accolades, and you were, you know, getting noticed and acknowledged. Yeah, and, and it was a, the pressure yeah. of like keeping up, and I was just like, "Damn!" Like, but it's almost what? like you. It wasn't all one hundred percent you at yeah. the same time, right? Yeah, exactly. Because and you're you're trying to fit into this mold of what the world it deems an EDM yeah. DJ, right? One hundred percent, man. Yeah. That's spot on. And yeah. uh, I remember I took a break. Um, and I, you know, I went home and I had to spend time with my family. I hadn't seen them because I would always, I'd be home like two days a month. And, uh, that gave me a chance to kind of, I remember I went to a party, a family party mm -hmm. and I was just like, damn bro, like I forgot about this part of me. And mm -hmm. like, it was like, it clicked. I was like, I have, I have a lot to offer the, e the EDM world, the music world and, uh, you know, my culture, you know, where I came from. And for that, I needed to get familiar with was, it again. Was there a song that specifically that hit uh, you? Yeah. La Chona, bro. La Chona. <laughs> La Chona. <laughs> I remember La Chona. I was just like, I, the whole family got up, bro. And like, we're, I was in there and I was just like, man, you know, like, this is great. And, uh, man, I'm, so, I'm about to get to your head, bro. Cause that was, that was a big moment for me, you know? And I was yeah. just like. It can, it's, it's kind of a full circle moment after working with them, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. My God, bro. I was, and I try not to fangirl. You know, when we were in the studio, <laughs> we, were, we were in the studio for like eight hours, two days. Two yeah. Days. So he worked with uh, La Chona, which is by uh, Tucanes de Tijuana, mm -hmm. and then you did uh, Las, Yo Las Pongo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pongo, and it was crazy. It was crazy from your album last year. Yes. Right? And uh, I remember I, I planted that seed like four years ago. And, yeah, uh, I saw you put a video with them. You ran into them in a restaurant or something. Yeah, like well, that? we met up because you know that I kept bugging them, like my manager, and like, well, you know, we just want to meet. And while I was there, I remember I was super nervous. You could ask uh, Eden. Um, I drank like a whole bottle of wine, like I just chugged it, <laughs> and like I was, I was drunk, but I was just like, let's make music together, you know. And I'm sure they were like, they're, they're like a, they're a group, yeah, they're a group. They're like this guy's a DJ. What do you mean you want to make music, like you know? And I was just like, look, like I I have to break it down, you know, where where I can actually like we can 
collaborate there's a possibility and uh, i tried explaining how the elvis crespo track came about yeah mm. and um how that one was just entirely produced by me and then i just hit up elvis and he, he jumped on it you know where like obviously they can play their instruments and then i will mold it into i would add my half to it and uh, i remember I, I i understood they they couldn't wrap their heads around it and uh they were like you know what maybe you could remix like chona and i was just like wow. uh that's great i would love oh, yeah. to but I, I think we could do something original you right. know mm -hmm. and um for like a year they kept saying the same thing and i was just like you know what send the stems you know send the stems for lachona so they sent the stems and i was just like i'm gonna i'm gonna use their instruments yes and we're gonna make something new and uh i sent them back something new i was just like this, this is what we can do something new and they were just like oh <laughs> okay you know they and, saw your uh, vision at that point that's huh? when that's when they were just like oh yeah oh new song and i was like yeah you know wow and uh they was he was all for it they were stoked bro they were stoked because they were just like wow this is like you know something this new it's our sound but it's also like today's sound and they were just stoked bro i spent i spent like two days eight hours a day in the studio with him and like it was the best bro and like it was so into he had an entire wall full of like uh what was the uh bmi awards mm -hmm. and i was like this such a hard flex bro <laughs> it's like a whole wall full of them bro and uh he's you know he's a legendary writer and uh you know it that that song took a lot of work but you know it's worth it it was yeah. worth it you know because what i do what i had to do is i had to and when i collaborate with people like elvis crespo and uh tucanes you know and angeles azules is uh i gotta go home for like and, and i gotta study their music for like a year mm. because it's it's mm. it's listening to everything on online and then also trying to recreate it uh so you can really understand how the instruments and the rhythms and like the bass you know structure and all that and then finding a middle ground between my sound and that sound wow. yeah. you know so it, it it takes it takes a lot how did, how did you uh deduce that it takes a year that like a process of a year because you know why like i feel like a lot of producers a year would be like hell fucking no they you know yeah. like, they time. want everything so fast 100 percent. because i i even I, I work with certain producers yeah. and if it's not done in a week yeah, they don't want to yeah, they don't yeah. want to work on it no more you know what and you know? um i look let me this is the way i am I, i'm sure yeah. producer i'm sure some producers can do it in a week you know i mean like i know yeah. there's some producers i mean i i know that if i want to collaborate with beyonce it's gonna take <laughs> me three years to get ready you know yeah because like I'm, I, it's just that's just that's, I guess that's just the way I do it. I'm just acknowledging the mm -hmm. intention yeah. on your side yeah. to actually research for that's a year. Yeah. And, and just, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, know, you know, but I think, I think yeah, it's a lot of work. Um, but I think because I'm really a fan. Right. You know, mm -hmm. like I work with people that like, yo, I'm a huge fan. And it's so fascinating. Sometimes I even forget that I'm studying their music. I just like I'm just listening to their stuff on like on on an airplane ride, and I'm just listening to their music. And when you're listening to it, are you kind of just like? Because I remember when I used to produce early on, I used to do like hip hop production. Mm -hmm. But I listened to like a song fifty times, uh -huh. and I listen. I'd like I maybe the first five listens I'm listening to bass line. Yep, yep. And then I, yes. the next ten listens I'm listening to yep. guitar. Mm -hmm. How the guitar changes. Yep. And then I'm yeah. and then drums like oh the drums are changing every sixteen. Yep. Or it's changing. Mm -hmm. Oh then the bridge goes does another. 100%. So you're doing that with almost their whole catalog. Yes, almost. and 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 that's one. See see that's really important. That's the starting point, right? right? And then the second part to it where it gets deeper is when you actually try to recreate it mm. because uh, it's just different when you actually try to structure the patterns like you know you hear it one way but then the way it's laid out it's like it's crazy like there was um like the, the one of the things that i just couldn't figure out was uh, uh the guitar mario's guitar mm -hmm. i was just like what is this guitar bro there was just like a different frequency and i could not do it i remember i got close one time and wait uh, so you're replaying the yeah, I'm trying to recreate the sounds, you know, to try to hopefully. Cool. I just remember at the time they didn't, they I, weren't really sending me their sounds, so I tried to make the sounds for them. Wow. Um, uh, and you, you're referencing Lachona. Yes, yes, yeah. And mind and, you, this song came out twenty plus years ago. Yeah. yeah. So he yeah. Didn't give me some shit. And, so you're um, listening to the stems of Lachona? Is that? Oh, that studying? helped me out even more. Yes, okay. that helped me out even more. Um, That's I, crazy that they send you the stems and you're listening and analyzing yes. it and then you're recreating it. Yes. Yes. So so. Um, I used I used some of their sounds and I would pitch it up because I didn't want yeah. it to sound exactly like La Chona because um, I knew they would if I, my intention was for them to re-record their parts. Um, did they re-record? Yeah, they did. Okay. They did. They're like, we get it, cool. All right. Were they like, you know, that was pretty good? But we're gonna do. You know what? You know what? He even got to speak in English and shit. I was afraid. I was afraid of that. And right. um, 
And I really wanted to, like, that's why I prepared myself. You know, I like, if I was going to make their sounds, I was going to make sure I was ready for it. Mm. Yeah. And um, I remember they were just like, man, we really like the way your bass sounds. It was like, cool, but we, we need the bass player, you know? Uh, but he was, and they, and we ended up layering it. So yeah, there's yeah. both of my bass and then his bass as well. He did the structure. He did the pattern, right? Like, like the rhythm that I, it was his. I followed it. I layered it on top of his. I was like, we're not changing that. That's your sound. Right. Um, but yeah, uh, as far as uh, the, his guitar, I found out what it was. It was isn't, he doesn't use a regular guitar. He uses a bajo sexto. Oh, okay. So it's like a bass. It's a bass guitar, but oh. it's uh, it's an acoustic guitar. It's like it's Switch in the track. middle. And uh, I was just like, wow, bro. It was crazy. When I went to the studio and I saw it, I was like, that's not a regular guitar. You know? <laughs> is it like <laughs> four strings? Uh, no, it, it's it's. Oh, it's like, like a it's, six string it's, it's guitar. A six string guitar, but oh. it's like it's in the middle. There's a bass that's lower, and then the guitar's a little higher, and it's in the middle. Okay. And uh, I remember, I, you know, he's just like, yeah. And, and I remember he clearly makes it like when we're in interviews, he always makes sure he like, well, make sure people don't call it a guitar. People know it's, it's about. He like makes it known. It's about sex, though, and that's the sound. Wow. Mm. Yeah, it's like mind blowing, bro. I was like, cannot figure it out, but you know, I learned that at the studio with that. I, I just want to acknowledge the fact that you you self taught yourself all these instruments, kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to. Um, yeah, I got to. Well, guitars. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And uh, you know, with instruments, I've gone. I can't play a trumpet, but I can like. I understand the trumpet. You know. Mm. It's like I know what's like. Like if I'm gonna play it on the keyboard and write it out. But you can play like the violin or the cello. And I learned how to play the cello for my wedding. Yeah. Oh Holy shit! He did a, he did a performance. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Specifically for your wedding. Yeah, man. I remember <laughs> I wanted to do something nice. I was just like I wanted to perform wow. at the wedding, but I didn't want to like DJ. I wanted to do something for my wife. How long did that uh, take you to learn? You know what? I was supposed to get married pre-COVID, so I, w- I would only had like a year of practice, which yeah. COVID kind of came in clutch. Yeah. Because it gave me two years to practice. Yeah. <laughs> so. so so, um, yeah, it was like, I think a total of like three years practice, but I, I mean, my poor wife and poor kids, they were just listening to the same songs over and over again for like eight hours a day. And, uh, yeah, the wedding was, uh, last, um, uh, November and, uh, yeah. Congratulations. Congrats, Thank congrats, you congrats, so bro. much, man. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> and it's, you know, it's now it's clutch because now I get to use the cello in my, in my songs. Yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. It's pretty <laughs> crazy. <laughs> wedding vibes. So, so yeah, a lot of people, they, it was a secret. It was a surprise. And everyone was just like, you play the cello? And I was like, yeah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so like w- when you came up with Bailar, right? Mm. And it was due this during this phase where you were kind of um you just wanted to change, right? <laughs> yeah. You wanted to represent your heritage a little bit more. Mm. And then, you know, you were listening to Lachona and it, mm. and it hit you a certain way. Mm. How did that evolve into Bailar? Because I'm oh. I'm going to tell you from our perspective. I think from 2012 from an open format DJ in Las yeah. Vegas. Yeah. There was like a Latin hit crossover hit once a year. Yeah. yeah. So like 2012 was like. And Dunk it was mostly Pitbull. A lot of time, well, right? I mean, yeah, Pitbull is like another level, thing. I'm talking level. about yeah. like, you know, Danza Goduro was like yeah, 2012. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. I think 2013 was like uh, Mark uh, Mark Anthony Vivier. Yeah. 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 yeah mm-hmm. And I'm, just, I'm trying to look because I did a little bit of research. I was like, I was thinking like, there was a change, you know, in, in Latin. 2014 was like Bailando, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then 2015 was El Perdón, right? Uh-huh. I think that was like a little crossover. Mm-hmm. But there was just like one a year, right? Uh-huh. But then when we've never really had an EDM Latin song, no. really. I remember in the like in the 2000s, we had like Saxo Beat, oh, yeah, Loca yeah, yeah. People, Sac Noel, you know, we, we had all of that, Calabria, all mm-hmm. of that shit. Mm-hmm. But there was like a 10 year gap or like eight to 10 year gap where we didn't really have any you know, Latin, mm. Latin uh, EDM, uh-huh. but then Bailar hit, <laughs> and yeah. it was like for it was like oh shit! Now I have something to play. That's cool. That's up tempo. Really cool. No, but before that, for we us, it was, back to all the old hits. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. yeah. We were like you know, uh, yeah. w- and it's a it's a weird time because it was kind of that commercial pop EDM sound was starting to go down. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And you had like one of the last hits to filter <laughs> yeah. through, yeah. which is it's five true. more hours. Yeah. No, no. That's cool. Like five more hours was one of the last hits yeah. to uh-huh. like kind of s- slip through the cracks. Uh-huh. And then I think like literally when I was looking back, me and Neville were like looking back mm-hmm. in open format, like 2017 was nothing. Yeah. Because by that time yeah. you had like, Mouton was you know yeah. coming mm-hmm. through mm-hmm. so by Lara to me mm-hmm. was a change a turning point for almost for EDM and and, and, Latin, and Latin music, Latin music. Cool. even well, during that time like yeah. people like Calvin Harris he was changing his sound yeah, he was going yeah, a little I remember more that. laid I remember back like, so yeah. it's like whatever you were feeling at that time huh? was literally 
like perfect timing because everything was changing around that time. Because the, the, the in beginning of the, the next wave. Of, yeah, because in 2016 you had the emergence of like Azuna, like Bad mm-hmm. Bunny, yeah. uh, Balvin, and then Despacito yeah. and all that shit came. Yeah, out, yeah, right? yeah. So yeah. it was like it was the starting point for like a big. To me, it was one of the when I think back on the changes. That's yeah. one of the changes I that's first cool, think of. Man. That's crazy. But I, I, that's why I want to kind of talk about what you were going through and how it evolved. So it was like La Chona. You heard it. Uh-huh. Well, then, you know what, you know? La Chona came after by that. So, okay. so well, well, no, no. La, when when I heard La Chona at a part at a party, then like uh, that happened before. But I remember one of my first attempts to try and bridge bridge yeah. both worlds was uh, I remember I had like a Suavemente remix, yeah. and I remember being on stage. I was just like, man, like I heard it. I saw the people going crazy. I was just like, man, I I wish this song was mine. Mm-hmm. You know, like I wish I, I was playing something original. And like I like you know I I tend to do that I plant these seeds and I'm just like you know what why not you know and uh, I remember Bailado was like my my fifth or sixth attempt at bridging merengue with EDM mm. um, like the first four were each one was completely different but I remember the first one I remember I made it like after like a week and I was just like wow this sounds great you know and, like after a week of not listening to it I came back I was like what the fuck this sounds like shit you know and, uh, <laughs> and uh, you know it was just it was just trial and error trial and error and listening to a lot of merengue you know listening to what were some of the songs that didn't make the cut do you remember uh, you know and the, I mean I, I don't, they didn't even make it to export you know so like <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but, uh, but yeah you know I learned a lot about that's when I said you know what I, I think I need to learn merengue because I thought I knew it you know but no i didn't and um i um uh, i remember i learned that there's like three different kinds of merengue you know there's like a 130 merengue there's a 150 merengue and there's like 170 you know like la vaca is like fast da, 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 mm-hmm. la vaca, t- 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 very fast very fast so um i was like cool i think i'm gonna do like 130 merengue right and uh, i wanted to do something similar to my life so i learned the, the bongos and everything and then the, the type of hat uh, the I mean, uh, um, Guido they use, and then the bass line they use. That's probably one of my favorite things in merengue, especially like Elvis Crespo sound. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember I made a little demo, and I remember when, no, I was in the studio, and it was my fifth time trying. I started from scratch, and uh, I remember I had like just like 10 seconds, and like I knew, I was just like, I think this is it. I think this is it. I remember I showed my manager. He was just like, who is that? I was like, this is me, bro. <laughs> he, was just like, he was just like, no, it's not, bro. I was like, that's me, bro. And then I, I made the drop. And he was like, oh, damn, this is you for real? He was like, who do you want on this? And as a joke, I was like, Elvis Crespo. You know? He was just like, oh, all right, I'll try. He was like, it to me. And then the next day, my manager sent me Elvis's number. Wow. He was just like, he was like, he's down. I was just like, wow, really? there's no way, bro. There was no way. I'm kind of uh, curious the how your manager reached out and w- what he did. You know what's cool about you know what's cool about that that world. Yeah. Um, a lot of people are kind of easy to reach, especially. <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> The Spanish world is pretty easy, bro. They haven't had a hit or put out a hit since like the early 2000s. So you're pretty easy to. You know. <laughs> so they're just chilling, right? They're just they're waiting, chilling, waiting for that call. Chilling, you know, they're chilling. They're, they, they, they can tour for the rest of their lives because they, yeah, they got hits. They bro. got hits, you know? And, uh, you know, lucky me that they're still down to continue to make music. Wow. Hmm. And uh, he was quick. He's quick. I was quick, man. He could come up with something on the spot. He's like, yeah, all right, there you go. And I was just like, this, this is great. Did the yeah. acapella in the beginning of that song had to do with him saying the suave meant that acapella? Uh, yeah, so so um, I aimed for that, something like that. Because that, you know, the same thing with like, algo en tu cara me fascina. Yeah. Like, that's like, he has to start off slow and then bring in the merengue. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, we got to do something similar, but it's like, it's it, it, it's it's the same, but it's, it's also new, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, bro, I remember he was just like, I remember we were at Coachella and uh, it was my first time ever playing it. And uh, he was just like, hey, so like, you know, what band did you use? You know, I was just like, I didn't use a band, bro. That's all me. Wow. He was, he, he didn't, he was like, no, 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 like the instruments, like who's that? And I was just like, <laughs> that's me, bro. He was like, yeah, I get it. But like, but like, how did you, you know, like, who came in and did the, yeah. <laughs> and I was just like, that's me, bro. And he was just like, wow. huh. He didn't get it. He didn't get it, right? And like, <laughs> and, uh, and I understand though, because I mean, you know, those, it's from a different time. He's from a different time yeah, where yeah, a now a producer player. can do all that. Mm-hmm. And um, I remember I pulled up my laptop and I showed him everything. He was just like, he looked at me. He was like, "Yo, let's do an album." I was just like, oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit. you know. So like, I've been working with him, and uh, you know, he's super busy, and like, obviously my schedule too. But you know, we're trying to get. We have got. I think we got four songs together already. But we're try- I'm trying to work on his project. Really? Now. Yeah. Damn. Wait. Oh. So since then, 
You've been working on an album for the last like eight years. No, so so, oh. so no, so we've been trying. I've been trying because those four songs that we have together are for my project, right? And uh, you know, I want to work on his project, you know, because he's done so much for me. I, and I feel obligated, and uh, I just literally called him like two days ago, and uh, you know, trying to get something at least in, in time for Ultra. It's so crazy to say I just called him two days. Ago. <laughs> it's crazy, bro. It's, I'm it's, Mexican. It's, I'm like, dude, that's a fucking <laughs> staple song. Yeah, it's crazy, man. When I remember my when my parents met him. My mom was just, just so starstruck, and I, you know, he told me he was like, "Your mom's cute, man. Like she's adorable." I, just, I, was like, <laughs> <laughs> I think we're, we all were all like that when we go we come around. That's special. That's crazy. I, I, I just smell Grammy. With with that shit right yeah. you release that i smell it it just yeah. smells like grammy shit. <laughs> what was it like being in the studio with him um you know what i got to be in the studio with him for napoleona and um he's he's lively bro he's lively he's got he the energy like and he's just he's a machine bro and like his voice is just when, you, when he comes in and we just like the, it just turns up bro he's got yeah. energies and like his voice you could just hear it and his voice like that's elvis bro and like when he starts singing, like he'll just start singing just randomly, and it's just like everyone stops what they're doing just to listen to him because he's he's got the most one of the most unique voices in, in you know the Latin world. When when you when Bailard like exploded and you started getting booked for festivals and Coachella, mm -hmm. did you slowly were you confident to drop certain music? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, or were you kind of a little hesitant? You know. And yes, hundred percent. Um, well, when I remember I, I was doing the, the Suavemente remix and like seeing how that worked, I was like, oh man. This, I can do something like this original. Right. I felt comfortable. And uh, with that, you know, I was just like, you know, I, the reason I chose Suavemente was because that was the main peak hour song of um, of mostly every Latino party. So yeah, yeah. so La Chona was Even more, now, even now. It's yes. still that's to the, this day. That's to yeah. blow the whistle. Yes, yes, so like there's different Latino parties, right? There was some like families that liked more mariachi music. So, you know, and there's a peak hour mariachi. Then there's the same, some, some. Some families that like like Norteño music, yeah. you know, and that's where you would play La Chona, and that was the peak hour. And then there was more more families that like salsa and merengue, and that's where suavemente would come into play. But mm. suavemente would work at every single party. Yeah, right. So that's why I went for that sound first. And then after that, I was just like, what else? And I started playing more cumbia on my sets, and I saw that work too. So I was like, great, you know, it's just started. It was like a it was like a snowball effect. So. And you started building a more Latin base, like more Latin fan base, right? Hundred percent, yeah, definitely. That's when uh, you know I felt I fell in love with music all over again. You know, um, mm -hmm. it was it did get become hard because it, the pressure and the business side of things. I mean, and, um, like how so? What do you mean? So um, you know, like obviously the, the success with five more hours. You know, what Ultra they 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 did all that for me. You know, they they opened those doors and they connected me with Chris Brown. And um, it was a lot, you know. Because, Ultra Records. I'm yeah, Ultra Records. Sorry, Ultra Records. And um, I remember, you know, my management at the time was just like, we need another five hours. You know, we need another five hours. Damn. You know, you need to go back in the studio and do that same thing all over oh, again. Wow. I was like, the, diff the, the thing that, that was so hard to, to kind of explain was that when I went to the studio to make five hours, I didn't go in there to, to make a hit. Right. Yeah. You know, I was actually inspired by, by love. I was inspired by my wife. And I remember I just showed up at the studio and I just made music. And... Uh, you know, I was like, how how do I do that now that there's something expected of me, something of that caliber? It's so funny. It's like, it's such an easy thing to tell somebody, right? Do it again. Mm -hmm. Do another one. Right? Another mm -hmm. one. I mean, but another they don't one. realize it's the like, pressure. I don't even know what I, I did. Yeah. I, just, like, <laughs> <laughs> I, just went, I just like, you know, how, how can you get out, get that out of your head and go back into the studio and just, just be you again where now it's just like, now you know that you have to, you know? And, and, and I felt a lot of pressure. You know, I was, you know, the management at the time wasn't the best fit for me, mm -hmm. but um, it was very... You know, because the art, the other artists were able to go into the studios and make hits. You know, and yeah. so the manager you have now is not the one you had before. No, 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 no. I'm, well, yeah. I'm kind of wondering because when you entered the the EDM scene, right, and and your first one of your first songs was with Chucky, right. Oh yeah, he yeah. made me. Yeah, he let me do a remix when, un, under Tonic, right? Uh, I think when, it was Tonic. Yeah, you were under DJ Tonic, right? DJ yeah. Tonic. yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah. So when you were entering in 2012, and you know you're entering the scene, and you, are you kind of getting? I feel like everyone needed a cosign in EDM, mm -hmm. right? Like yes. in DJing, like yeah, yeah, in yeah. production, like you needed to. I I talked to some producers, like I had to ghost produce for a dj um, for a certain amount of yeah. years and yeah, yeah yeah they would start co-signing me and bringing me in yes and then they would like you would use some of their managers you would use the oh, lawyers yeah. and stuff. A, yeah so were you kind of kind of getting grandfathered in but you weren't happy and then 2015 you wanted to just 
around that period, you wanted to change things a little bit. Yeah, right? you know, I think you know one of my in, things, all, in all circuits, like with the music and behind the scenes. As yeah. Well? So 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 my thing is, I think I grew up in, and you know, I was part of that wave of producers and artists that were really like, oh, well, I was stubborn. And I was just like, you know, you know, fuck the system. You know, like you know. I mean, nothing wrong with that. But uh, yeah, <laughs> and, and you know what's funny? You know what's funny? I'm I'm a I'm a complete like I support the business side of things. I mean, it works, right? Like, like uh -huh. signing with labels, it works. Um, I'm a big believer. If you're going to go, you know, it's like, if you're going to go to war, make sure you have an army, make sure you got a lawyer, make sure you got a good manager, make sure you read the fine print. You know, there's, there's, there's opportunity in signing with some of these labels. And, uh, I also signed at a much different time. It was back then where they still did those kind of deals. I did like a three album deal and they like gave me a fat advance, a crazy advance. And, uh, you know, back in the day it was different. But uh, I guess, you know, I, I, I went in not really understanding. I didn't read the fine print and all that. All that kind of messed with me, like, creatively. And I kind of, I was stubborn, man. I, I was really close-minded. Um, but, you know, after a while, like, I really started to focus on the good things that came from it. Like, over mm -hmm. the years. And I was just like, actually, this opened a lot of doors for me. What the hell am I thinking? Right. You know, like, mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, what Ultra did for me was, you know, they, they were one of my biggest blessings in life. You know, I just finally became independent uh, February 1st. And wow. um, Congrats. Congrats thank you so much, man. After yeah. nine years, right? And uh, you're free. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and uh, I remember I was I like you know he texted me the uh, the main the, one of the main guys and I told him I was like look brother like thank you for giving me the biggest blessing. Like, right. me, me and my family are so grateful for everything because I mean he 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 opened he they kickstarted my career. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's a great way to look at it because it's a journey, right? 100%. It's a journey, and you you take this journey with different mm -hmm. people. You know, you bump heads along the way. And sometimes the journey starts off great, and then it just gets rough. And yeah, then, you know, and then it, every journey comes to an end. Yeah. So, and know, I think right? I think for me, um, it was it was it was seeing the positive and everything that really like right. it was like I was, it just changed everything for me. And like it, I, I fell in love with music all over again. And then I was able to deliver the the last album like nothing, bro. I made it like in two weeks. Wow. And I was just like, I sent it to them. I was like. There you go. You know, like I had like an epiphany, bro. And I was just like, oh, I'm filling up with music all over again. And I was like, I'm back. You know, I'm here to deliver the last album, you know, and uh, yeah, it was great. So. I'm, I'm kind of wondering when you when you showed Ultra Records by Lar, what was their reaction? You know, it's cool. So <laughs> I remember I had Perdona, man, which uh, was, yeah, that was before by Lar. That, okay, okay. that was the first Spanish track I ever mm -hmm. did really officially. Okay, yeah. And I remember I sent it to them. They were like, oh, we, we didn't, you know, they didn't, they didn't, they didn't know. They didn't right. understand back in the day. And I was like, put this out. You know, and they were like, ah, you can put that one out for free. You can give that one out. <laughs> <laughs> let you keep shit. that one? Yeah. And I was just Holy like, Holy shit. And I remember, I, remember, I mean, bro, back, it was a different time back then, you know? Uh, this before like no, they they had the no, ball, no well, well, hold on and, and it was a year a year later uh, the song blew up on SoundCloud yeah. it blew up and then uh, they were just like you know we, we were wrong they admitted they were like you're sorry they apologized really um, they that apologized never and yeah, you know what I feel, like, I feel like that happens a lot actually <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I feel like a lot of motherfuckers come back uh, like no, afterwards you know, like, physical you, you know, apology right. like that's no, kind of crazy they, 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 they were they, I mean that's what I love about Ultra yeah. you know they were they really they they prioritized relationships with the artists right and uh, you know they were just like uh, and they, they ended up signing it they yeah. ended up signing it and they did give it an even bigger push mm -hmm. uh, uh, and they asked for a second one, a second Latin track. I was like, cool, but cool, we're going to put this one out right, right? And I gave him Bailar. <laughs> wow. Damn. Yeah, because I was talking with yeah. Jamie, and we were talking about Bailar. He's like, no, he had another track before I'm that like, that was he bigger. He a bigger one than that one. And yeah. I was like, yo, we and we were listening to it. We're like, it sounds familiar, but we never really, we weren't playing it yeah, in no, our it open was, format it, rooms, it right? Was definitely, it was definitely like, that song I didn't intend it to be for the for the, for the the club or the parties. It was more like just like. It was, it was like more of a Latin. It was a radio-friendly record. It was, it was. Yeah. It was to, to some point, yes, it was. It was and singing. It was nice. It was yeah, poppy. It was, it was pop. Yeah, it was. It was a fun track. And um, you know, now but that was that was bigger in like Latin America, right? That record. Uh, not, well, I heard my mom play in the radio. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, it's yeah, yeah, like that's, cool. Yeah. Yeah. that's cool, man. And uh, I think that was, I think, one of the first of its kind. Yeah, yeah. It's, it definitely has an early like two thousand pop Latin vibe, like uh -huh. Mexican side, like Faye and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So it definitely has a singing vibe. So it can hit in a different market. Mm -hmm. 
Um, definitely, but it's not no techno big house. Big yeah, house, yeah. Big it house. was it was funny because that you know that song wasn't actually intended to actually be a song to put out. I remember um, the the Adrian and and Dicey. Uh, I was helping them because I was like I was I was still looking for a label or to who to sign with, and I went to Atlantic Records, and that's how I saw I, I saw how they worked, how they worked as a machine. Th- this group worked on the melodies. This group worked on on the on the chord progressions, and like I saw that, and like I came back to our little studios, and I and I invited them over i was like i'm gonna show you how they write and i made a little beat and i was just like showing them how they write i would they do the melodies and they replace with lyrics and then boom did you write that yes Fuck. so so um and like i remember we made it all in one night and um yeah i remember my manager was like put this out you know i was just like cool we should probably send it to ultra because then i started talking to ultra and that's when that whole thing happened. But um, yeah, but, that song wasn't really intended to. But now it's your closer song. Now it's the biggest song in my. And, set. I, and I hear that like you do a few remixes now. You do like melodies when you drop in the melodies, man. Yeah, you know what? I so you put that song out yourself independently. Yeah, on SoundCloud for free. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And it blew the fuck. And out. I remember, yeah, it, it, it took off, man. And um, I'm saying the Ultra Records definitely saw the, the plays on that. Shit. Yeah. yeah. And you know like, what? Yeah. You know, like, yeah. like as, yeah. as, yeah. <laughs> as an independent, like by myself, I did great numbers. Right. Um, well, once they signed, obviously they took it to a whole nother level. Yeah. You know, and um, I think that's one thing they've always done. Like with Bailad, they, you know, they added Pitbull on it. You know, mm-hmm. uh, that started my relationship with Pitbull. And um, I remember one time Pitbull called me. I was like, I was at Benihana, and 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 just my phone rang out of nowhere. And I was like, hello. And like, oh yeah, Bobby. And I was just like, this sounds like fucking Pitbull. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I was just like, Mr. three or five. I was just like, hey, you know, I was like, I was like, hey, as in like I. I, I have a 99% chance. I was like, this is for sure Pitbull. And he was just like, hey, I just want to thank you you know, for giving me the opportunity, man. Like, I love the song, man. It's an honor to work with you. I'm just like, this is fucking Pitbull, bro. Like, There's no way. And I was just like, bro, like, the honor is mine. You're Pitbull, bro. Like, you know, like, everything he's done for the for the Latinos and, I mean, for for, for music in, in general. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was just like, you know, it's cool as fuck that you can be Pitbull and still be that humble. Yeah, of course. You know, like mm-hmm. humble and sweet. You know, like and he's like, bro. He he motivated me, inspired me. You know, right. it's like, wow, bro. Well, like, you're you're, very, you're extremely <laughs> humble. I feel like. <laughs> yeah, I mean, bro. your energy is like you know, because when we when I I've met EDM artists and they're very pretentious. They're very mm-hmm. like entitled. <laughs> I don't know if you'll be like that, you know, maybe I next year. Not. I really hope not. You know, I hope not. You know, it's funny. Like double the entourage, yeah. you know, I don't I don't yeah. know. No, I hope, I hope not. He didn't don't answer his phone anymore. It's no. like, yo. Bro. No, I hope not, man. I mean, I think one of the biggest things is that, like I said, I still remember what it's like to be on the other side of the speakers. Yeah. And, um, you know, I've had my fair share with artists before I was anything myself. And, um, you know, some of the biggest artists I admire, um, you know, like in a way broke my heart. But at the really? same time, oh, at the same shit. time, but at the same time, I was just like, you know, you know, I, I always look at the, you know, I was like, they're probably tired, you know, they're probably tired, or whatever, and uh, you know, I've had full circle where you know, and now I end up working with these cats, and I'm like, these guys are cool as fuck, man. It's probably a right. bad day for them, you know. But it's just like I for sure don't ever want a fan to ever feel like that. No, yeah. definitely, bro. Because when I followed you and I was like, I DM'd you like four years ago, and I was I just DM'd you and I said, Yo, can we be best friends? Never got respond to, bro. Oh, uh, bro, you know, no way. I mean, Jamie, come on, man. <laughs> Jamie, come on. Like, That's some weirdo shit. For yeah, me. man. No, I, 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 I don't blame you for not responding yeah. back. I, I felt I felt like a true fan. Yo, I was like, Yo, imagine friend. looking at the profile picture of him. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yo, skip. And then re- receiving that DM, can we be, fr- I'll be like, yo. You know what's funny? Like you know the DM was so stalking shit. Just, uh, DM request. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just sitting there. I'm just chilling. No, bro. That's trust like, me, that's yo, not, you're nah, lucky nah. he didn't block you. I would have blocked you. I know, right? I would have blocked you. I would have blocked you. I fucking block me, bro. No, bro. You know what? It's funny because uh, right now I have this. <laughs> I have this. <laughs> he says right now. It was four years ago, by the way. No, so, 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 um, uh, I've always been really interactive with my fans. Um, yeah. Um, Thank you, bro. It's, it's hard. It's hard. <laughs> I'm your, I'm your mama from Selena yeah. now. No, I'm just, I'm just picturing Jamie at a show, at one of his shows, just like waving at him. Like, Yo, remember me? Yeah. Uh, I was in your yeah. heart. Heart, heart. <laughs> <laughs> heart back. Bro, no, I'm telling you, like, right now, I have this uh, app called Community and stuff, and it's basically like a phone number. Um, I look at it as like my own little Twitter. I'll text you there, bro. Yeah, bro. And, and it's, it's, you know, it's funny. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> it's, funny, it's funny because um, um, people don't believe it's me. Right, and and if you open it, it's like a, just a bunch of text messages, and I just randomly click on some, and I just start talking to them, and they're just like, 
this is not you. And I was like, yeah, it is, you know? And it's like, prove it. I was like, okay, what do you want me to tweet? You know, and they're like, they'll tweet this, you know, and I'll tweet and they'll lose their shit. They're like, what? You know, and sometimes they'll, they'll just randomly text me and be like, blue, red. And I'll be like, blue. You know, and they're just like, what? You know, because like, so, bro, that's like, I've had some weird stuff. Yeah, that's yeah. not weird at all, bro. Yeah. I was just trying to be friends. That's cool. Right? It was great. We're friends, I felt bro. connected. I was like, yo, Mexicans, Mexicans. You know? <laughs> when you went from Tonic to Dior, mm. what, what was that? What was that? <laughs> so there was a band already. What was that Tonic? transition? There was, there was a band called Tonic already. I remember when they emailed me. I thought it was the end of the world. There was like season. I don't know what a season desist was. Oh, you got a season desist? Yeah, yeah, bro. <laughs> wow. I had like four thousand likes on on this, on Facebook. I was just like, my career's done. You <laughs> know, I was like, I'm done. Where, you where's know? that band at now? Um, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, remember, I, remember I, was so, I was angry at them, bro. I was like, they were gonna have a show, and I want to tell my fans, let's all buy tickets, let's all go talk shit. <laughs> More like buy tickets and not show up. <laughs> That's what I like, yeah. But uh, but yeah, like they had, you know, they they needed me to change my name. I was just like, can I at least change the I to an exclamation point? They're like, no, it's because you're still gonna say it out loud. It still says tonic. Let me see what. This <laughs> is like, damn. So, oh, so it wasn't always an exclamation point. Uh, it was, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was just regular DJ tonic. Oh, and, um, and then you <laughs> try it because I saw a couple things with the exclamation yeah, yeah that's why that so happened you tried that for yeah, a little and they bit were too. just like nope doesn't cut it you need to oh, change wow. it so i was just like you know what like i feel like that was gonna ruin my career and i was like i'm gonna you know new name was, i'm gonna invent a word i googled a word and i could i couldn't find it anywhere and uh it was like my last name is orosqueta and uh my dad when he would sing it was called juan de oro and uh mm. he spelled it just with one r and uh, i remember i was just like hey dad can i can i use the the oro part and he was like, yeah so um yeah, that's how that came about. You really like being original, right? Yeah, I think it's a lot, a lot better when, when, you know, see, see, because that's where the music kind of like, I don't want to be famous because of my name, you know. I, if I become famous, I hope it's because of the music, you know. Oh, wait, 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 what do you mean? Famous? Like, 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 um, you know, some people just have a great name, and sometimes I'll go watch a band at a festival because they have a great name. You will? <laughs> yeah, I, like, I would never like, do that. You know, like I'm just like. <laughs> Who's <laughs> like this? This this person has a dope ass name, and I'll go and like, yeah, I'm weird like that, bro. I'm weird like that, you know, See, bro. My DM yeah. doesn't seem that crazy no more. <laughs> 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 you know, I'm just like, you know, like there's some. I remember one of the last one of the last bands uh, was Greta Van Fleet. Uh, I don't know if you guys have heard of them, but I was just like, that sounds like a badass name. And now, I, and now I listen to the music, and I'm just like, these kids have the possibility of bringing back rock and roll. You know, these kids are insane, bro. Like, it's like some uh, uh, Robert Plant, you know, uh, Led Zeppelin? Mm -hmm. But, like, reincarnated. <coughs> and, like, they're doing this. It's, like, modern now. And, uh, you know, they're, they're insane. I got tickets. I'm not able to make the show, but I got tickets for Anaheim. For, and my kids are going to go with my dad and everything. Wow. Yeah. And that was just because of the name. I was like, Grand Van Fleet. That sounds gangster. Let me go see who these guys are. That's a dope-ass name. And, uh, yeah, they're insane. Wow. Yeah. yeah, I have a question. You said 2018, you had a breaking point. Was that... Before or after Avicii's passing? And we know it was around the same time because uh, that kind of, um, I think that was a big, that was also very big was just like, damn, man, you know, like, I'm not, I'm not the only one, you know? Um, I was obviously, um, you know, RIP Avicii, I think he, thanks to him, you know, uh, Five Hours got signed. Mm. So, oh, um, yeah, yeah, he, wait, you know, uh, how, how did that happen? So, um, my manager at the time, he was really cool with, I think, his ex-manager, and he sent it over, and then Avicii wanted it for his uh, label called Levels, or Pyramid, or something like that. Mm -hmm. So they signed it first. And uh, it was it was kind of out. It was like, I had like a preview for a long time, and then they signed it like that. And then uh, that's when Ultra, I signed with Ultra, and they were just like, we love this song. We're ready to blow this song up. Can we go and buy this song? So they like want to go buy it for like half a million dollars or something. Wow. <laughs> yeah, bro. Yeah. So, um, uh, when and then hear, when you hear that shit, did it scare you a little bit or no? I was just like, what? Like <laughs> this was, you know, it was also like my first time doing big moves like that. I was just like, right. for real? Like, how are you guys going to blow it up? They were like, we're going to add, you know, vocals to it and all that. I was like, cool. So I was like, I started writing to it. I was like, what do you guys think of this? They're like, oh, that's cute. You know? <laughs> wait, wait. Did you write the Chris Brown's vocal? No, no, no. I no, didn't. didn't. No. the one that has the uh, female The vocals. female the vocal. Female so okay. I did that. And um, I remember I actually did something else by myself. And then um, they were like, no, we're not really looking for that. We're looking for something that fits the track more. And I was like, damn. You know, like, okay. So I grabbed, uh, um, I, I did write that vocal part with the, uh -huh. with uh, Dicey. And they were just like, oh, man, this, this is beautiful. We'll put this out, too. You know? I was like, cool. So there's three versions. There's, like, the instrumental. Mm -hmm. There's the female one called Don't Hold Me Back. And then there's Five Miles with Chris Brown. Wow. Yeah. And it's cool because I can play 
uh, either of them and like it's just like people just love the, that beat the is like mesmerizing thank you bro. Wait, wait, is there a story behind you made that beat yeah so um the whole the whole song is basically my trip uh to go visit her on valentine's day and like it starts off like so like that because i was on a bus and like it's visualizing the tires starting to spin and then like you know the moment where i finally you know get to see her it's like that break in the middle that ended up being the intro of the chris our uh, chris brown version mm-hmm. you know and um yeah and uh that's that it's that's the story it's me yeah. going yeah surprise her on valentine's day it's a, you, you're big into intros right you, yeah you really like yeah 100 percent. it's like a story man and it's yeah. like because i think one of the biggest things like uh, i remember when i saw kaleidoscope um uh tiesto at the shrine and his intro was just like i was like wow Bro, I was just like that. I, I want all my music to be like this. It's like, it's it's just like a, a moment where it's just like, all right, things are about to begin. You know, it's magical. And uh, yeah, I'm big on intros, hundred percent. Yeah, five more hours is one of those like, uh, you know, EDM at some point became like uh, almost like for us open format DJs in the two thousands, like doing an eighties rock set, mm-hmm. like a power eighties rock set, right? Where mm-hmm. you do like Sweet Home, uh, Sweet Child of Mine. Uh-huh. You know, I love, ACD, I love rock and roll. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you you do like these power rock sets. Like EDM started becoming like there were like less and less hits towards the the end of 2010, mm-hmm. and it, we would do these power rock uh, power EDM sets all of a sudden mm-hmm. because there wasn't really that much new EDM that was crossing over to our rooms. Right. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. But I remember that you know five more hours was what was what, it's still even now I play to that shit. Oh, yeah. oh, definitely, man. Man. we still cool, play man. that. As cool. one of the highlight records from that era, from the yeah, you know, the, you know, I remember when I met Chris Brown. We were at I was at Coachella, and then it was right before we ended up shooting out out there. And uh, for a moment, we took a break from the music video, and he came up to me, and he was like, "Hey, you know, it was him and, and Travis Scott." And he came up to me, and he was just like, "Hey, you know, I just wanted to tell you that like, you're He's like, "Uh, hey, man, I really like the song. By the way, like I liked it before Ultra came up to me and told me about it. You know." And I was just like, wow, bro. <laughs> like, <laughs> it was just like, wow, you know? Breezy? Yeah, and he was just like, yeah, you know, he was just like, I you know, appreciate the opportunity. And it's crazy because that's like, that's all the biggest artists I've ever met, they've always had the moment to thank me for the opportunity. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I'm never, I'm, I'm like, bro, that's great. You know, like, it's so, it's so nice to see that you can be Chris Brown, you can be Pitbull and, and like be that humble. Mm-hmm. So Ultra approached Chris Brown to be on the remix. Yeah, yeah. So that was their move. Yeah, I have like I was, you know, they did that on their own. So mm-hmm. that's the benefits of a label, right? Hundred percent. That's did. why I say like, bro, like there's 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 ways to do it, you know. And uh, uh, I think um, it was they had a partner. It was I signed with Ultra, Sony, and RCA. So I think I, I think yeah, I don't know what exactly happened because I think he was signed to RCA. RCA. Or something. Yeah. So uh, that's how it all happened. Was there anyone that was really instrumental in your career? Because I was kind of wondering, you know, how did you get the opportunity to uh, remix Chucky's track? Um, you know what? In the beginning, I got a lot of support from Laidback Luke. Laidback Luke. Yeah. Right. I, he used to always, you know, I remember he had his blog. And, um, yeah, he was, the, and I recently reached out to him. I recently re- reached out to him, and I remember I was just like, you know what, bro? Um, I don't think I ever told you this, but thank you. Wow. I, you know, I was just like, you're one of my biggest blessings in life. And he was like, wow, man, you know, like, that's great. You know, like, I remember, like, I was just like, yeah, I can't believe I never really said that to him, you know, like that, you know, and I'm glad I got the opportunity to do so. And um, <clears throat> Layback Luke was definitely one of, like, the first guys to, like, really, same thing with, like, and he was he was doing that with, like, Avicii and all that, too, like, all those big cats. And uh, Wait, how, how did he, how did you guys connect, you and Layback Luke? So, so I reached out on his blog. You know, I was a big fan of the way he, I used to watch his videos, and I, you know, I love playing his, a lot of his old, like his early music. Can we be best friends? What would you say? <laughs> yeah, no, man. Yeah, like that. I remember. Um, shoot your shot, bro. <laughs> I remember. Uh, I, I reached out to him, and like he obviously saw me as a fan first, and uh, I ultimately wanted to. I wanted him to hear my music after. After like I right. felt like I was ready, and uh, he would give me a lot of like advice, and I remember I finally sent him one song it was called Bounce, and he was just like, whoa. He's like, I want this for my label. And uh, I remember he started playing it, and I was just like, wow, bro. You know, that's I feel like that's how I kind of I got invited to play his, like, mix match pool party at WMC when, back in the day. And, um, yeah, little by little, I got really cool with Dimac, and Steve Aoki took me on. Mm-hmm. He was, like, my grandfather for a long time. And uh, what he did with me is what inspired me to do with, like, Panda Funk and, like, all the artists to take them on tour and stuff, you know, show them the ropes and uh, really try to push them to, to, to grow. And... Um, 
Yeah, so Steve Aoki was big for a long time. I think he he was the one that really like, you know, he he took me to Europe to tour. He took me to like all these other countries. Wow. And uh, yeah, so that was I think those two guys were big, wow. monumental for sure. And and is that kind of why you kind of want to stay close to your fans too as well? Because you know, with all you know, with Layback Luke staying close to his fans. Oh yeah, that's you know, monumental, you wanna, man. Yeah, that's monumental, and I feel like that that like it gave me a much higher appreciation than just music. You know, like I wanted to be like him, um, mm-hmm. because I, I think it's, it's a different, it's a different, it's a whole le- another level of like respect. For people like that, you know, they don't right. forget that, like, you know, the, 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 so there's some artists that they just build this wall and it's just like, you just listen to the music and that's it. You can't touch them. You can't talk to them. You know, mm-hmm. it's just like, and, 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 and us as, as fans on the other side of the speakers, we, we feel that. We just feel like they're untouchable, like they will never see us, you know, but there's people like Laid Back Luke or Steve Aoki and a lot of people, man, that like are just, nah, you can reach out to them. You can say hi. You know, mm-hmm. for me, I always tell everybody, yo, like if you ever see me, I've seen so many tweets that's like, oh, I saw your target. I didn't want to say hi. I'm like, bro, say hi. You know, I'm very approachable. Say hi. You know, it's funny when people come up to me and say hi, and like, and like you see other people, like, who, who else is this guy? You know, <laughs> it's so funny. And like sometimes people come up to me and like, can we take a picture? And they're like, yeah. They're like, good, cool. They're like, who are you? You know, because <laughs> they, see, they see me taking pictures with everybody else. So is that a rule for you now? Like, I never, never deny a picture. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. And like, it's funny because there'll be like some shows where it's just like, I have to go. Right, I have to go. We have to go to the airport. Like immediately, we have to go get our bags. Or sometimes we have our bags with us, and like, it's like a thousand people there and they're all trying to get pictures with me right and i tell my manager i'll tell eden poor eden uh i always tell him i was like bro like your job is to try to get me out of there as fast as possible but i'm gonna fight you because i'm gonna want to take a picture with everyone right you know and um i will try my best i always tell everybody put your phone on selfies it's easier than like trying to pose for and if someone takes it in front of you it's like selfie that's the fastest way to do it and uh yeah man i've spent three hours one time after a show just like in the cold i was just like hey if you're the willing to wait for me i'll wait for you yeah you know and uh yeah man i'll never turn down a picture bro you'll He's never like, see i'm not gonna test for y'all guys yeah <laughs> <laughs> i'm not gonna test <laughs> but yeah man i mean i don't know it's just i feel like and it's, it's 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 great man because like every person i remember like one of my biggest meet and greets i did was like the three it was like four three and a half hours it was in, in el paso after my show and uh it's like everyone had a story for me you know, I was just like, hey, you know, like, you know, my son listens to your music, you know, and I was like, oh, like, you know, thank you for doing this for the culture. And I'm just like, that's it. It it it, it makes me like, I don't know, bro. It's like, fuck it. Yeah, that's why I'm keep doing this, mm-hmm. you know, but it like really like I like I like it, I let it touch me, you know, and it's like, yeah, it uh, it helps me with so much. And when I'm in the, in the studio. You know, back in the day when, you know, like I said, I was going through like a little bit of mental, like kind of like I was stuck and um. That helped me a lot. I was like, nah, man, you know, like, don't, don't, don't. I was like, you know, don't take music so serious. It's like, you know, you're here. Yeah, music now is like, hearing these stories, it's become more than a hobby. Now it's like, when I get into the studio, when I get open up my laptop, I'm like, okay, you know, this isn't just music. You know, I have, I have it's the possibility of, of, of touching lives, mm-hmm. you know? And uh, so I tell my kids too, that, you know, they want to DJ. And it's just like, you know what? If you really want to do it, you'll do it. You know, it's like, right. but if you're going to do it, you know, just don't fuck around with it, you know, because it's what, what I do is, uh, it's not just music. It's, uh, you know, some of the stories I've heard. And I'm just like, this is more than music. So I have a mad respect for music. And I think because I've treated music with so much respect, I think that's why it's always taken care of me. Right. Oof. You know? Because I've always treated it as a trophy rather than like a... I've never expected nothing from music. I've never, you know, it was... Uh, it was uh, I remember where I, my, this was plan B. Music was plan B. Mm-hmm. I was going... Uh, I wanted to be a trauma surgeon. You know, so I became a nurse and everything. And you I went, you went to medical school, school, right? Yeah, bro. Yeah, like I had before like, you started DJing, right? Yeah, I had I had three jobs. I was doing a convalescent home, I was doing a retirement home, and I was doing some uh, volunteering work at a hospital. And I was doing this all before I turned eighteen because I wanted brownie points so that when I turned eighteen, at least one of them would give me a job. They all ended up giving me a job. So like I had yeah. three jobs, and uh, <laughs> and I remember I, like at the end of the day, I was still have adrenaline, and like I'd be producing like this. Hearing, seeing my son spits up, and I'd be making music like that, like late, man. And uh, music was just like, like, yeah, like my reward at the end of the day. And I think because I've always treated it like that, it's always taken care of me. Wow. Mm-hmm. I, I was. I, do you ever have to put yourself, like, you know, you talk about this kind of this time when you were going through like a, a rough period. Do you do you have to put yourself in check in certain times to like just be like, oh, like I'm I'm kind of going down this weird path or. Yeah. You have to like kind of pull back a little bit. Yeah, man, and, and uh, refocus, right? Okay. Yeah, and uh, you know, uh, I've 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 grown a lot 
um, you know, my wife has helped me a lot. She's very supportive. And, uh, you know, accountability, you know, sometimes, right. you know, even though I, I got kids and I'm grown, I mean, I, I still, like, be, you know, like, sometimes I'll, I'll get too crazy with alcohol, you know? Like, it's yeah. just, you know, just... Uh, you know, maybe I don't know. Maybe it's my ADHD or something. But you know, sometimes I gotta put myself in check. It's like, okay, dude, you know, relax. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, but it's part of life. As long as you know, I'm willing to always better myself. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, you know, I have a great team. I think my team really supports me. I you know my my manager, Berman Eden. You know, I call him my husband because he's you know he does he's like my better half, and yeah. Michelle's my other better half. So it's <laughs> like um, I have a great team, man. And um, you know, I feel like there's a lot of people in the industry that could use a lot of support like that. Yeah. You know? I give I you props, nice. bro, because they're all, like, Latino and shit. So I'm yeah, like, man. You know what's funny? Like you know what's funny? You know what's funny? I always say this, right? Like, I remember before I signed with Berman, uh, with Prodigy, he was just like, if you sign with us, I'm going to become Latino, bro. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> bro, he moved, he moved to Miami, right? Like, he just, he talks to all those urban guys now. He's, he, they understand Spanish. Like, it's crazy how much they've really applied themselves uh, to 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 make this relationship work and like bro like I I, I remember like I was I, I still to this day I tell him like bro like this is the best decision I've ever made, you know it's and and that's I think that's important and that's one of my biggest advice for young artists that are looking for management when it comes time to manage shit that's when you know you look for a manager you want to look for a fan, a fan of you that believes in you mm -hmm. you know because mm -hmm. um that's I think that's important you know and I learned from my past relationships is uh the best ones that work out are the ones that like when they're really uh, a fan of your music and they right. see the vision and they see it in, in, in what it what it can be right and uh, that's important bro because it's like that that makes it exciting because now when i make music i can't wait to show my management you right. know mm -hmm. same way i can't wait to show my fans because right. it's like they're all a part of it yeah. right because some managers kind of just see you as a number right yeah. in the yeah. books like oh, he's part of the books mm -hmm. Yeah. And then they typecast you into this one thing. Yeah, and it makes it it's easy kind just of to like, say, you know, we yeah. need another one. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, well, and we're, it's we're, we're we're missing, uh, you know, we're missing like a Latino representation. Well, now we got it. Or yeah. like, yeah. you know, we're missing this or that. Yeah, and then you're just fitting into a box for yeah. them to sell. Yeah, but they're not really selling it because they love it. They're just selling it to just be like, yeah, we want to offer all categories and everything. You know what? You know? And, and 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 I get it. I get there's like there's uh there's some managers that can function like that, and there's some art artists that can uh, keep up to, for that. You know, keep up. On on, yeah. on that kind of expectations, but you know, I feel like when when someone like me, I really really do try to try to try things out. Uh, I like I like following trends every now and then. It's fun to like you know mm -hmm. throw my, here's here's my two cents, and then but then also it's just like damn, I'm gonna try something really new. It's kind of scary when you know I me mean, like damn, I, I'm gonna show management this. I hope they like it, and then I show them, and they're like, yo, this is great. This is gonna work. You know, it's like and they're they're fans, and then I have sent them things where they're like. Okay, this is pretty cool, I guess. You know, I'm just like, okay, maybe this might not work because I yeah. trust them. They're, they they know music too. Well, you even know? your albums, you're, you're all over the BPM spectrum. You're <laughs> yeah. you're, you're, you're you're playing with different drum patterns and mm -hmm. different sounds, and you're touching yeah. on everything. So yeah, you're it, very diverse. Yeah, you know, it's funny. You know? Um, I remember like not too long ago. Every now and then, I'll like, <laughs> I'll spend some time and I'll listen to everything I released. Yeah, and I, I I try to really like pair two songs that sound the same. And I feel like the only two songs that really sound the same is Freak and uh, Ye, I think. Ye, Ye. Yeah, yeah. So it's but like, I think you were young and you were really trying to yeah. fit into yeah. the, the trend well, of what, what was, was happening going at on. the time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were just talking about that, actually. Yeah. We were like yeah. listening to it because I don't think we, we didn't hear one of them. I think uh -huh. we heard Freak. Uh -huh. Yeah. And we heard Ye, and we were just like, they kind of sound the same. Yeah, yeah. A it's, little the same, bit. It's, the same, yeah it's the same lead. Yeah. It's the same lead. And, uh, that was one of the like probably the only songs where I used the same lead. Right. Yeah. And then, uh, but if you listen to songs like Flashlight, Perdóname, Five Hours, Bailar, uh, Yo Las Pongo, it's just like just, just <laughs> yeah, it's just so face. different. Yeah. It, and you know what's funny? Like I'm just like, damn, they sound so different. I don't want to confuse people. But then I've heard from people, it's just like no matter how different they are, you can still hear you mm -hmm. in it. You know? And it's like, oh, I wonder. Like I wonder what that part is. You know? What What are you uh, excited to work on? Like, what do you? I, I'm trying to think there's so like what i love about latin music right now is mm -hmm. even myself like i learned about cumbia in like 2020 mm -hmm. you know he, he was showing me like there was all these uh djs on twitch mm -hmm. he did a stream he was playing cumbia and i was like what the fuck is this like yeah 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 and i, was like, and I started to love it <laughs> yeah. yeah and then one of my homies from miami raul he was digging he's he loves digging for vinyl so mm -hmm. he was in you know we were in mexico city he's digging for like colombian cumbia oh yes like og colombian yeah yeah, cumbia. yeah, yeah. 
and I was like, oh shit, I thought cumbia was Mexican. It's Colombian. No, 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 yeah. yeah, so it's like, and I'm, every, yeah. yeah, every culture, every culture has like their their kind of their 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 specific style of cumbia. style of shit. Yeah, yeah, and um, yeah, Col- Colombia, and um, I think like I love a lot of the Peruvian stuff. They're a little, mm-hmm. especially more like um, more like their um their their native stuff. Mm-hmm. Their sounds are just insane, bro. And it, uh, it's just so deep. It gets it goes so so deep. Yeah. And then you know there's dembo, there's fucking reggaeton, oh, yeah. yeah. There's a uh, banda, that whole, that whole, yeah. yeah. There's just so much right now. There's uh, mm-hmm. uh, guaracha. There's this. Guaracha. So to me right now for Latin music, I'm like holy shit. When I go out and I you know there's a dope party in uh, in Vegas, Altura. When uh-huh. I go listen to them DJ, I'm like yo, these dudes are DJing open format Latin music, yeah. Because mm-hmm. they're going through every BPM, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're playing like every group of firma, and then they're going yeah. into like. Uh, Tokisha, they they're playing uh, everything. Yeah, and it's like this this in the span of five years for me, like Latin music has just exploded into so many it categories. It has, and you want to know something? You know? Um, so I recently, you know, the uh, I got asked, I go like, what do you think of? Um, uh, well, first of all, I'd like to thank people like, you know, Bad Bunny and like, you know, the Bobbins and all them. Like, mm-hmm. they, they really took Latin music. You opened for Bad Bunny's yeah, shows bro, last crazy, year. Bro. Crazy. They, they, uh, yeah. they really took um, Latin music worldwide, you know. Um, and, uh, you know, someone recently like said, what do you think of like all these non-Latin uh, DJs, you know, gentrifying Latin music, you know? And I'm just like, it's great. They're opening doors for us, bro. What do you mean? <laughs> you know, they're like, oh, I guess, you know, I guess, you know, I guess that's one way to look at it. I was like, it's the best way to look at it. You know, uh, there's, you got all these non-Latin people listening to Latin music and now they're understanding it, you know, and uh, that's great. You know, it's a win-win. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and I've always, uh, I've always encouraged, bro, like, first of all, it takes time and energy to create music. And if they're going to add, it's like, I remember I was making some sounds with like some Indian voices, you know, it's just like, I wasn't gentrifying i was just like, i really fucked with it you know yeah and uh so so i think it, for me i see it as an appreciation and uh it's it's cool because it's it's opening doors for for us latinos you know yeah and uh yeah so now you have like some latin stuff like that being played in europe and stuff now you know because mm-hmm. of these house djs and i was like it's dope you know right. like it's great it's great i'm kind of that's why i'm kind of curious to see you know to see what sounds you you want to are you trying to play like, with yeah because i see your sets now and you kind of go into like rock in espanol with my nine yeah, like yeah, yeah are you trying to work into music like that like yeah so so if you hear me playing it it's probably because uh you know one of my goals is to collaborate yeah you know oh. right now when i have been trying we have been trying to communicate with my now that's smart yeah, yeah. and so uh, dealers and north is coming out yeah you yeah. know it's funny so so um i actually have a connection with them and it's like the dealers and north one is tricky because the middle ground there is like i still can't see it because it's northern music it's yeah. not even four on the floor but you dropped yeah. it this past weekend yes and i that did shit yeah fun. i was like yo <laughs> when i heard you dropped that, yeah. i was like there he is <laughs> yeah yeah 100 yeah, percent. i'm uh, like it made me proud bro you know like i i even even with mariachi mariachi and Orteño are two obviously two big genres um but that like this i feel like those genres are probably might just leave alone until something clicks uh, mm-hmm. um i feel like mariachi is more of a possibility to find a middle ground mm-hmm. where we can do edm mariachi um because uh there are there are some up upbeat like four on the floor yeah. mariachi styles uh i feel like norteño is not really they don't really they do like, boom, 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 yeah you know so um yeah i mean i'm sure there's a way to do it Call yeah. Grupo Feed Map, Crooked. Grupo Feed Map, no, I'll probably do, yeah, I'll probably do like a fast, I've, done, I've thought about Manda, um, and I think like a fast cumbia, you know, like uh, mm. like Duranguense, yeah. you know, something like that. Yeah, like Valentina and stuff yeah, like Exactly, that. perfect. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Or like, de fiesta, you know, like a, a Banda Recodo and stuff yeah. like that, that specific style. Nice. So with with Miami coming out with Ultra, right? Do you do you have anything in particular you want you're, you're excited to kind of drop? Yeah, because the East Coast Latinos are very different from the yeah. West Coast. Yeah, they're more South yeah they're Latinos, more like Dominican right? or, or Puerto Rican. Or right, because uh, like me me and Neville we grew up in New York on so we grew up with like Boricuas and yep. Dominicans. Mm-hmm. Yes, exactly. So like when I came to the West Coast, it was completely different. The yes. music was different. Mm-hmm. They didn't know some like you know it was very very different. Yeah, I think yeah like like one of the things I learned is like you know there's some hip hop that I'm better off playing on the West Coast. Yeah, there's some hip hop that I'm better off playing on the East Coast. Mm-hmm. Um, and same thing with and then down like, south is another world. Yes, exactly, as well. <laughs> exactly. Like I know the closer I am to Atlanta, the better. You know, there's different hip hop. Yeah, I saw, I saw you DJing in Texas. I think maybe El Paso or something. Uh-huh. I'm not sure where you did, 
But um, that's what I loved about you. you. You do these big rooms and festivals, mm. but then you'll do this like, you'll do these smaller rooms. Yes. Yeah, bro. And yeah. I keep telling these DJs that are big, right? These big DJs. Mm -hmm. You got to do sometimes a small room and just yes. do a homie's party. Yeah. Yeah. It's not about yeah, yeah. the money. Yeah. It's literally yeah. about... You know, yeah. like touching these different it's the people. intimacy, yeah. right? Yeah, and yeah. The intimate. Yeah. It's like even comedians, you know, yeah. comedians, they 100%. do big rooms. Mm -hmm. They never they do, do small rooms clubs. anymore. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's like you got to do these you know, small and rooms. I, and I think, I think uh, maybe, you know, I, lo I obviously love doing the intimate ones. I think it, it, it stems back to when I was doing the house parties. Yeah. Uh, but it's funny, like, when there'll be some shows where, where, like, I recently did one. It was like a college like dorm dorm party like whatever recently it was just these kids that gathered up the money and they you know they 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 booked me bro and i showed up and i knew that the kids that booked me were the only ones that knew who i was <laughs> so i was just like cool i'm about to dj uh, a party where i need to cater to them 100 mm -hmm. percent. like these kids don't really don't really care who i am they're just they're, they're at a party which is refreshing you know it was just like i had to pull out some of my really pop and like also like you know, it's just like, and it's fun to do those every now and then because oh. it reminds me, it was like, you know, and, and if, if it, it turned out to be a great party, you know, I was just like, great, you know, because it's like, I still got it. You know, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> how, how, how long was your set? My set, I think, was, um, I think, was an, uh, Edgar, do you remember that, that college party we did in Connecticut? It was like an hour and a half or an hour? Yeah, it was like an hour and 15. Wow. And it was, I was like the only DJ too. I was like, there was one dude just warming it up and then like, yeah, and it was so crazy, bro. It was like this college thing. I've never been to anything like that. And yeah. It was just like every like how, how, dorm, whatever, like or, or place, well, had their own party going on. Right, and right. I remember they had these kids that had like a system and a stage. I was like, this is sick, bro. <laughs> it's always a good feeling to be like, I, I still got it, right? <laughs> yeah, I can still yeah, do yeah, this man. shit yeah, a little yes. bit. It's like, you know, like I want to be able to. To, to to DJ a party was just like all right, nobody no, nobody cares who I am. It's yeah. just like it's, yeah. it's, it's it's you better put on some good music, you yeah. know. It's like so. So yeah. you're about to be on the biggest stage. Of, uh, Ultra Miami is gonna be Ultra, big. Yeah, definitely. Are you, are, do you get nervous about that shit? One hundred percent. Yeah, um, this is your first Ultra, right? It's my first Ultra. But when you're in front of EDC Mexico, right? Are you more comfortable than you would be in front of like a Ultra in Miami? A little bit. Um. Well, I don't know. I haven't. I have, well. Well, we'll see, right? Yeah. <laughs> What's your um, back? I mean, I mean, obviously. EDC is EDC, Ultra is Ultra, yeah. Coachella is Coachella. You know, like because one of the places that I even when I, I travel to when I'm doing open format shit, mm -hmm. I still get a little nervous about Miami. Yeah, because I gotta know my shit in yes, Miami. Yes, Miami is like one of like the capital. Like you know, like you gotta. You, yeah, I feel like people are going there because like, there's like no white people in Miami, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's no. like it's, it's, it's like all Caribbean, yeah. Latino, like yeah, you got the, it's the hub Dominican, of, Puerto Rican, Haitian, Haitian Jamaican. Jamaican. You have yeah. the original oh, yeah. like yep. sounds of, of the islands. Of yeah. Everything. No, everything. <laughs> yeah. Like, yes. you know, everything is there. Yeah. yeah. And you have to know your shit. Uh, and yeah, and then they go re like it's not even the surface of reggaeton. It's like deep reggaeton. Yes. It's not the yeah. surface of dembo. It's deep. Yeah. It's deep uh, dance hall. It's deep. Everything's like deeper yeah. down there. Yeah. You know. I'm, I hope I'm not making you more nervous. No, man. <laughs> no, no, um. He's all sweating now. <laughs> He's like, "Fuck, man." Oh, right. man bro. <laughs> even we might have to push that one back. No, bro. no, no, no. So, so you know what's funny? I remember um, I saw um, what are they called? The Afro Bros. I saw them in uh, I think it was Switzerland. Mm. And I was just like, huh? Like, I wonder like how it's gonna how it's gonna work because I was like, we're in Switzerland, bro. They played their set and like people were going crazy to the Latin shit right, there. Right. And I remember I was just like, man, like <laughs> I, I like I I hope I hope I can do that one day. I hope I can go to a different country and like still play my set and like people were gonna be there fucking with it. And um, you know, little by little, like I remember I would be. I remember I found myself playing cumbia like in 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 South Korea. Oh shit! You know, and this is like my people. Yeah. yeah. People, oh bro. shit! That's <laughs> nice, bro. And um, bro, I think uh, you know, I think I, I used to overthink. Cause it's like, bro, like you know, like Gumbi yeah. is dope, bro. Like it's it's same thing with that. And like when it, when I go to Miami, uh, I am a little more comfortable playing now. Like just whatever I want. Wow. But uh, I also find an opportunity, especially since I've been working with a lot of urban artists now. There's some collaborations that I can drop. You know, like mm -hmm. I have this new song with Lenny Tavares. And uh, you know he's big, and uh, you know it's uh, it's some what's a song that I'm super stoked to play, especially you know in that area. Where, and then not, I played it in Mexico for the first time. It was like my fourth song, fifth song, and uh, yeah, bro, I'm stoked because it's like a combination of Mumba and Urban, you know, and yeah. it's it's a perfect combination. It's the same tempos, you know, and uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's you could tell there's a, it's it's more on the EDM side, but it's something that I think could work in both worlds. Yeah, and you got so many new singles popping right there. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, man. Mas Crazy. You got the one that's dropping this weekend. Uh, Hija yeah. de Su. Hija de Su, yeah. yeah. That one, too. Yeah, and um, you're just, you're just going to, you're ready, right? You're independent right now. You're just going to yeah. pump, pump the yeah. shit out. A lot of, yeah, oh, there's a lot right. of music. I think I got like two records worth of, of uh, two albums worth of music and then a bunch of singles, man. And I'm just like, I'm still cooking, you know? Like, right. I told you, man, I just recently like fell back in love with music and I'm just like, I'm having fun again, man. You know, yeah. I think it's really important, you know, and it's like, and even and that alone is also inspiring me to do even more. Seeing the music come out, I'm just like, I got to go do another one. Yeah. You know, and then playing it, playing new music inspires me because I got to do, do even more, bro. It's just like, you know, I'm so glad because I know that, 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 you know, that spark can burn out, you know, that flame can burn out, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, I thought it was burning out for me already. Right, yeah. and uh, seeing that it's back, I'm just like now. I'm just like taking advantage every single moment. It's like every chance I get to open my laptop, I just get in there and I just it's, it's so much fun, bro. Are you constantly looking for new producers to kind of like keep that spark going as well? Um, you know what? Yes, now, yeah, now, yes, I am definitely. I think uh, uh, you know, I stopped. I would, I would only listen to like my own music, you know, and uh, every now and then I'd go and listen to other music unless I was working on a collaboration, um, you know. But recently, like I like I listened to to Skrillex's albums. And I'm just like, this is insane. Bro. His new album is crazy, insane, yeah. bro. Yeah. You listen to that production. I'm just like, this guy's a, this guy's like Einstein, you know, and uh, it's inspiring. And uh, it's just like, bro, I got I got to keep doing this, you know. Like, I, like of course, let yourself be inspired. Don't forget, you can get inspiration from other people. And I guess you know, I kind of forgot about that, you know. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, Skrillex is a legend, you know. There's also like a lot, a bunch of these other cats that like, you know, like like those duties. I remember I told them, I was like, yeah, hey, you guys gotta make an album. You know, it's like you guys are putting out these singles. It's like, make an album. You know, that's when people are going to get to see a personal side of you and you're telling a story. You know, and they're like, all right, cool. You know, because that's also like, I'm a big fan of them and I would love to hear an album from them. You know, I feel like that's that's when you can really show fans a, a, a personal side of you. So that's one of my biggest, like, advice is like, try to make an album. You know, yeah. it's fun too, man. It's like, it's just, you get to like really find out who you are, what it is that you like, and you see a collection of you. And you put it out as a whole. You know? I, um, do you ever dabble in hip hop? Like do hip hop? Music? I, I, yeah, I have. Um, I mean, he made like an MOP remix. Yeah, yeah. I was going to ask you. I was, I was going to ask you. I think we all were going to ask you about that because there was a point where like hip hop it got so big it was starting to infiltrate those EDM rooms. Yes. And when you came out with Annie Up, it was one of the first records that had a, uh -huh. a breakdown into yeah. the hip hop. You know, um, that was that was mostly um, Mac J. Okay. Mac that was J, Mac yeah. J. Yeah, Mac J. Uh, yeah, Mac J. Uh, bro, I like. I remember I brought him up on stage at a at that Marquee Day Club, and I was like, "Let's play all the collabs we have, bro." We we're like twelve songs in. I was like, "Bro, maybe we just let's just play half." <laughs> 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 just like right, we have so many songs together, uh, but he he's also one of the one of, one of my favorite DJs. He's definitely like open format, one hundred percent. He understands it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. EDM. He you know he he he's an incredible producer. And uh, but yeah, like you know, he's he's showed me a lot of what I, a lot of the little things I do when I DJ. I learned from him, and um, but yeah, that's that's where that came from. But you know, I feel like I feel, I feel very intimidated when I dabble in hip hop. Really? You know? Yeah, that? man. I don't know. It's just like it's damn, bro. I don't know. I feel intimidated. Like you know? I'm 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 actually surprised. Like I haven't heard some kind of reggaeton. Yeah, you know, yeah, that's the only you. thing I have not heard from you. you know? Yeah, you know, I have, I have, I produced uh, Anamena a song. Um, I think it's called Semel Vido. Um, yeah, man, I remember, I, like, I went to Spain and everything. I shot a music video with, with her and everything. Mm -hmm. It was cool, man. It was like, it was more for her project. It wasn't uh, really for me. Um, and then uh, I'm telling you this new song that I have with Lenny Tavares and Joshua like it's it's more like a, I remember I sent it to Lenny and he called me he was like what the fuck is this it's a straight perreo bro I was just like sick bro I was like <laughs> you know it's like there's someone from that world calling me to say like yo this 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 is this is what they do yeah mm -hmm. I was like fuck yeah bro like you know and don't get me wrong it took me a couple of tries to get it to sound I feel like ready for, for someone like him yeah well we're excited man for this year you know Thank to you. hear you and uh, mm -hmm. I feel like uh, I don't know. Like we're excited with your independent, you know, yeah. being independent, uh, having all these projects come out mm -hmm. with Ultra. Seems mm -hmm. like it's just going to be a really good and fun year for you. Yeah, man. And and you know what? Um, it's been a long time since I've been independent. Um, I I'm, I remember back then I would really just put out a lot of music, nonstop music. I used to call yeah. it flood the market, flood the market. Are you trying to do an album, or you just want to just drop uh, singles? We'll do albums, you know, depending. Because that's the thing, I, I haven't been independent in years, so I, things are different now. You know, back right. then it was SoundCloud. 
back then it worked. You know, now you have, you know, you have DSPs, you have like, you know, distributors and you have TikTok and you have like, you know, like there's so many ways to do it now. You can be independent. It is possible. And uh, I want to kind of get familiar with the way I work and then also what, how these people work and, and see exactly. I have all this music ready. Now it's now it's trying to find homes for it and seeing what's, what's better. So I have to learn the ropes all over again. But um, but yeah, man. I mean, I feel like back then it was just like just SoundCloud, and that's that. That is what really helped me get Ultra's attention. You know, so it's just like I have a lot of confidence in my independent self. So, wow. yeah. what what do you think is the best way for young producers and DJs to get noticed right now? I think right now, producers? I think uh, well, okay. Um, again, I, I feel like I'm. I, I don't. The last time I was independent was over nine years ago um <laughs> yeah. but now um i i still think you know getting your music in as in in, in in the hands of as many people as possible and like doing it as easy as possible and i feel like now uh back then it was soundcloud you know but now i feel like getting it trying to find a way to put it on spotify or or album music and all that that's yeah, just learning music. like tune core or exactly just, just exactly. kid 100 it's so crazy because i talk to all these dj producers and i just kind of released something on you know on the dsps <laughs> And I was talking with them. They remixed it, and none of them know anything about ASCAP, Song Trust, BMI, and all that. They don't BMI. They yeah. don't know nothing about that yep. shit. Mm -hmm. I had to actually like sit down with them mm -hmm. and have them like sign up. Yeah, and I still don't really know anything about yeah, it. <laughs> I feel they make it confusing on yeah. purpose, right? Yeah, yeah, and like it's crazy, bro. Because like you know, there's some there's some cats that like they they don't know anything about it, and I'm like, bro, like that that money's collecting there and no one's really you need to go claim it do you, you, know? do you think i mean these producers whether they get the you know let's say they remix uh an artist should they just upload it to the dsps or you know like if they're independent if they're um, just if they're just coming up should they just upload it and put it up on like, i think Spotify? You, know, you know you know i think i mean obviously from back then it was different i think you could only do bootlegs you know you can't really do official remixes yeah but i think now that you can you can upload things to like i think it's called like what's that website where you can upload bootlegs? Bandcamp? I think so. I think so, or yeah. Patreon? Bandcamp? Yeah, I think Bandcamp might be I it. think they're shutting motherfuckers down on Bandcamp, too. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. But well, I was telling motherfuckers to just put it up on the DSPs and just okay. fucking upload it. And if they take it down, they take it down. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like like I said... Uh, <coughs> What, whatever it takes, you know, to get in in the hands of as many people as possible, you know, and like and and yeah. At first, I mean, I wasn't making money, you know. I was people had my music in their phones, you know, and like they started coming to the shows, and uh, that's that's when my audience began to grow, and that's when the label saw that there's an audience to sell my music to. Yeah, you know. So I feel like that's. That was my way of doing it. I mean, you could always just go viral, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, there's ways, there's different ways to do it. But I was speaking from experience. That's how it worked for me. I grew my audience independently, um, and uh, with the audience willing to buy tickets, that's when I started getting the shows, and I grew my audience. And that's when the labels said, "Okay, there's a market now." Right. Yeah. And shout out to your merch too, by the way. Like your merch game is pretty uh, crazy. Thank bro. you, man. And Windbreakers uh, that, and all that stuff. Yeah, oh bro, I have I'm telling you, this team I have is just insane. This kid named Cody, bro. He just like draws he's a tattoo artist. So he like draws these designs and I always tell him, like, bro, you're insane. I we're gonna do like a children's book together. Really? <laughs> yeah, bro. I did. I, yeah, you just posted a video of you reading to a bunch of kids, right? <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, pretty my, weird. I saw that. <laughs> but my wife signed me up. Uh, she got like she she helps me with my DMs and stuff. And she like she showed me. She's like, hey, like the school wants you to go read. It's like read across America, I think. And I was like, what? And we're like, I'm down if I'm free. You know? She's like, yeah, that's why I'm showing you because you're free. You're available to go. I'm yeah. like, great, let's do it. <laughs> so um, so we went and uh, I remember I showed up and it was like six six sheriffs. You know, and like we were picking our books to read to the classes. And I remember the, the, the message I got, it said like, oh, I have a kindergarten class. So I was like, great. It's going to be easy, easy book. Kindergarten, I can read that for days. You know, and I remember I the chefs were there picking the books. I was like, move, let me get the easiest one. And then they started <laughs> laughing and I got like the easiest book, bro. The easiest, like probably like three words a page. And uh, I remember the, the principal was like, cool, you're going to start with the sixth graders. And I had my super simple book and I was just like, oh my God, I'm such an idiot, bro. <laughs> and, uh, and I remember I showed up, just, the kids were on the floor, the sixth graders. And I was like, we're going to read this book. And it's like one page had like one, two. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, you see? 
three. <laughs> and, and like, you know, the kids were, they were, they were adorable, bro. They loved it. Wow. They loved it. And then I went to a second grader class and then I went to a kindergarten class. And uh, it was great, bro. It was great. I was like, I want to do more of this. Yeah. And um, <laughs> it inspired me. I was like, man, I got to make my own little book. So um, I'm writing a little story. It's actually self-experience. I remember when I was little. Um, I learned how to play the piano, and I was so stoked that I learned how to play. It. I think it was like Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, and um, I went. I went to go tell everybody in the apartment complex. I printed out papers, this flyers, saying Eric's Adventures Piano Concert, <laughs> and uh, my parents didn't know anything about it. <laughs> and all of a sudden, all these kids showed up in my apartment, and, uh, and my parents were like, "What the hell is this?" And I was just like, "I'm gonna do a concert," and I, I think it was mostly just us playing. And I played the piano for a little bit, and then like my parents ended up ordering pizza, and it was the best day ever. <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow. And I remember, I remember, I posted that flyer on Twitter, um, and uh, I remember that weekend I played a show, and then somebody like blew it up, and like they had it in the crowd. And that's I remember great. I started crying, bro. I was just like, I can't, that's amazing, you know? Because it's like now they're at my concert, but it's like, you know, like what? Like, I remember when I did that concert, I was like probably like five years old. Wow. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> so, yeah, bro. So you yeah. always wanted to be a performer. I definitely liked entertain. Yeah, I like, I like, I like entertaining people. I like, um, uh, I like hosting. I like, um, you know, I like showing people a good time. You know, it doesn't matter. I, I love when people walk away with a smile and they're just like, that was a great time. Thank you, Dior. You know? I that's all it's it, about. That's what it's about for me. You know, I think it shows definitely. Yeah. Yeah. In almost oh. everything you do, yeah, there's a lot of like positive intention. There's yeah. a lot of intention mm -hmm. and everything. Yeah, like if you're perdona me, it's it's actually a really sad story. No, perdona me, it's, it's, it's sad. a sad story. <laughs> but it sounds really cool. But it, it's 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 alegre, muy alegre. You know, yeah. like it's very fun. You know, because like for me, like it's sure. just like it's a part of life. You know, we go we have our ups and downs, but I think life overall is fun, man. It's great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? I was I was gonna ask you. You said people hold signs. Do people request Bad Bunny on all the time? You? you know, and I feel <laughs> like you're still one of us. Yeah, all the, all the time, you know, and I'm down. Fuck yeah, I'm down to play some Bad Bunny shit. I want to hear Bad Bunny too, yeah. you know? And, uh, you know, it's crazy. That whole thing with when, 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 when their team hit me up, they're like, oh, you want to come open for Bad Bunny? I was like, I don't know. Let me think about it, bro. I was like, of course I want to open for Bad Bunny, you know? <laughs> and uh, it was crazy, you know, opening up, going on those stages. I was just mesmerized, bro. It was just production, just insane. It was like oh, 200 guys back there. Then you had like, I was just like, this is it. Like, this is, you know, what the best artist in the world, this, this, is, their, this is what he carries. Right. You know, this is gangster as fuck. This is like respect, you know, stepping onto that stage. And I was just like, the power, you know, like, this is great. And it's like, he's one of us, you know, he's like Latino, dog. It's like, that's badass, bro. And I remember being up there, I was like, you know, you know, I can't get too big headed. You know, like this is they're, they're here for Bad Bunny. You know, I'm here for Bad Bunny, and uh, you know, but I get to warm it up. You know, and I'm glad they're Latino, so I got to play some Latino shit. I didn't really have to change my set. You know, that was you great. Didn't, that's really. a, that was the great thing about it, and uh, you know, it was it was it was insane, man. It was beautiful, and uh, I did get some you know new followers, and uh, people were just like, "Yo, Len, we just saw you. You're great. You know, like we just discovered you. You know, it's just like fuck yeah. You know, thank you, Bad Bunny. I appreciate that. That's fine. And uh, but yeah, bro. I mean, he's you know he he's Hell yeah, I'm just as I'm I'm just as crazy for Bad Bunny as they are, bro. <laughs> he's great, bro. He's great. I remember I met him, uh, I think it was like 2016, uh, during like his trap years and stuff. Like yeah. Champea, Champea. Yeah, bro. Yeah. And uh, I remember my publicist introduced me to him, and I was like, "What's up, man?" He was like really shy. He was like, "Yeah, what's up, bro?" Like you know, we took a picture, and then like years, years when I was on the Bad Bunny concert. Uh, the first one I did, I remember my manager came up to me. He was like, hey, you know you have a picture with Bad Bunny? I was just like, what? He showed me a photo. And I was like, I remember that kid. I was like, holy shit, that was Bad Bunny. And yeah. That's crazy, bro. It's great. You know, it's crazy how, like, you know, he came up and he became number one artist. Yeah. I, I think it's still crazy that people request. They're at a Dior show and they're still requesting. Yeah, that's Bad the Bunny. nuttier part. You know, yeah. I, think it's because, I think it's because they know, like, it's like they, they I mean, I'm playing a lot of other shit, too. You know, yeah. it's like, cool, we also want to hear some Bad Bunny. And I'll throw that in there, too, you know? I think it's also kind of like a flag of pride. A hundred percent. Yeah. So like, I have actually like a lot of DJs hate it. Mm -hmm. I actually don't hate it at all. No, I kind of love it. No, it's kind of like shows me cool. I could pay some about money. Yeah, but you it's know? also just kind of saying like you know like we're Latino and we're proud. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's like yo, like I, I've done so many rooms where, you know, I've had all these requests, mm -hmm. but it's like for a, a like a group right of like Latinos who had no representation. To finally have representation, to finally yeah. have music, yeah. and all this shit. When I see it, I'm like, "Yo, dope!" Like I know what yeah. it actually is better for me because then I'm like, oh, "Okay, now I can actually do some shit." Yes, y'all here exactly. I could do some shit for y'all exactly. Right now. That's and like, now. it's cool because uh, you know now you can play Bad Bunny, and like I could be I could be in like the, 
furthest away from 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 Latino America, and I could play some bad money. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know he's worldwide, bro, and it's like it's, you know his his music is is, is party. You mm-hmm. know? Yeah, so. We gotta get you a Kirkett's remix to play Bad Bunny. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Don't don't send him that. Number one, (laughs) I'll send it to you. Number one in DJ City. Yeah, (laughs) 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 send it to you. It's It's a good time to end it now. No, no, no. Dior, thank you so much for coming through. I appreciate it. Appreciate the team. Yes, sir. Thank you, man. Thank you, guys. And we're gonna check you out tonight. Yes, please go. I was literally about to say that. I was like, now it's my turn to take care of y'all. I'm gonna be in the crowd sending signs. You know? every time, bro. <laughs> Throw me a rose. I <laughs> uh, appreciate you guys, man. No, this no. is great. This is yeah. fun. Dioro, thank you very much. If you want to watch more episodes from Rogue Podcast, click either links on the left or the right. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube page and get updated on new uploads throughout the week. Peace. Peace.